began as a dream under the hot summer sun. 1,000 athletes paying the price in the hope of being a part of that one day in September. Their quest took them around the country. But for varying reasons, many players fell by the wayside. And so too did some coaches. But still, the highs came. And what highs they were. And despite the setbacks, the dream was still there. Finally, it came down to 40 players. For two teams, the dream is now close to reality. Hawthorne, a mean fighting machine, looking to make it back-to-back -back premiership wins. And Geelong, the glamour side of the season. The flashy cats have taken all before them and are now set to challenge for their first flag since 1963. This is the 1989 VFL Grand Final. And as we look across the city of Melbourne, we welcome you to the Australian Television Network's coverage of the 1989 VFL Grand Final, coming to you live from the MCG here in Melbourne. It is a magnificent day in Melbourne for football, and it should be a marvellous contest for two wonderful teams. First up, Hawthorne, who are looking to make it back-to-back -back victories, and Geelong who are hoping to win their first flag since 1963. Hawthorne did it relatively easily to make it to the grand final by accounting for Essendon. But Geelong had more of a struggle. They were humiliated first up by Essendon, but then bounced back to beat Melbourne and doing that extremely well, and then turned the tables on Essendon in a remarkable reversal of form. A tremendous crowd, a tremendous build-up, and the scene is set for truly one of the great sporting festivals in this country. The defending champions, Welcome back, and while it's a big moment for the players, it's also a big moment for the umpires. Brian Sheehan has made it back-to-back -back grand finals, and Peter Carey is officiating in his first grand final. Now, as Hawthorne make their way out onto the ground, looking to make it back-to-back -back wins, let's have a look at this team of champions and a champion team at that. They'll all bunch up together and then crash through the banner. These two sides have only met once this year. It was a thriller. Geelong led by 49 points at half time, but then Hawthorne put the foot on the accelerator and home they came to record an eight point victory. A wonderful game. And a wonderful sight here at the MCG as thousands of brown and gold balloons ascend above the ground. They come down the race now. They haven't won a grand final since 1963. They finished ninth last year. Malcolm Blight took over at the helm and he has transformed this team into indeed a very, very good one. They're only a young side, their average age is marginally above 24, whereas Hawthorne boasts an average age of above 26. But they have shown, not only during the home and away matches, but also during the finals, I guess after one early hiccup against Essendon, that they deserve to be here on that one day in September. They possess the Brownlow medalist for 1989, the champion player in the league, the best and fairest in Paul Couch, a prolific kick-getter, a prolific possession winner. And there is the young man, warming up. Down on the boundary line, the atmosphere must be wonderful, and I like their selections too. The players have lined up. We have with us now the choir from the Victorian School for the Deaf, the Victorian Children's Choir, and also John Farnham for the singing of the national anthem, Advance Australia Fair.
skipper, Alan Borda, to toss the coin. And so as the choirs leave the ground, John Farnham leaves the ground, it leaves 40 players, and we wish them well as we welcome our commentators for this all-important game, Don Scott, Ian Robertson, and Dennis Cometti. Thank you, Sandy. So the moment has arrived in bright sunshine here at the MCG, the two sides on the ground. And what a sight it is. Ideal conditions for football, Don Scott. Yes, it is. And let's just hope that that sun uh, stays under the clouds, Dennis, because uh, it is a humid day, as we've already heard. The ground in perfect condition. But it does play tricks, doesn't it, when you've got to look into the sun, Ian? Yes, it can be a bit of a problem, Don. Uh, but uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't get per more perfect conditions than at the MCG this afternoon. Here's the toss of the coin with Michael Roberts. Right, the toss. Alan Border has got the coin. Shaking hands, Damien Burke and Michael Tuck, the two skippers. And the Australian Test captain puts it in the air. It's landed on heads. Damien Burke, the Geelong captain, has won the toss. He is going to the main scoreboard end, which is left of screen. And Michael Tuck is going over to tell his troops the non-scoreboard end, which is right of screen. And Don, I'd say to a slight breeze. Yes, uh, it is blowing a, maybe across the ground, if anything, Dennis, but I don't think the breeze will be a factor. The factor will be how these teams establish themselves in the first ten minutes. What about his selection? Well, I'm going for Hawthorne, but it would not surprise me if Geelong get up because I think they're the best side to take it up to, the, to Hawthorne in this is for final series. Ian? I'm a Geelong man, Dennis. Uh, I've been keen on them uh, ever since Malcolm Blight was appointed coach. They've had some tremendous ability in their lineup. And I just thought that Malcolm Blight's charisma might have been just what was needed to harness that. And they've shown throughout the season that they've been a very, very good com competitor. And I give them a real good chance of winning this afternoon. Five seconds now. Who will take Ablett? Well, we'll just wait and see. My bet was theirs, but they've already made changes of Geelong bench. Flanagan, who was named there, but Hamilton, the young fellow who played his first game last year. Uh, Hawthorne haven't changed their interchange bench. Jamie Morrissey with Greg Manigan. So now we'll just try and pick up all the positional the changes. is on Ablett at the moment, Don. Yes. And Buccanara playing wide out on this centre wing. He was named on the half-forward flank. Linda going over to pick him up. Schultz will take Brereton. In the centre, we've got Burke, who will start. Couch is also there. Buse. And also Gary Hockey. The umpires, Peter Carey, his first grand final, and Brian Sheehan, his second. Now a callous in the back pocket on Whitman. So we're set to go. The ultimate prize. Capacity crowd. The grand final. Burke and Dia. Down by Burke. This is Buse. The second opportunity for Buse. Down towards the half forward line. Ablett's in front. Very interesting, Dennis, at that first bounce because uh, Yates came off the wing and went straight for Dermot Brereton. And Dermot's down on his knees, as you can see. Gary Ablett will go very close from here, from about 52 metres. Long, probing kick, it's home! Now, this is reminiscent of the final Dermot Brereton down. I mentioned how Yates came through the centre, didn't have eyes for the ball, just went straight at Brereton and has put him down. A bad miss for Hawthorne because he's the one who can really get them going. Now watch this on replay. You see Yates, there he is. Number Coming off the uh, wing there, he only had eyes for Brereton and then goes over and bumps him again. But obviously he's done his ribs. Very interesting that he had a second crack at him, Don. Well, they're all fired up, Geelong, and it's an ideal start of swimming. This in the 1978, when Hawthorne were, on that occasion, Moncrief gold, as Ablett did on that occasion. It was always going to be on. And of course, that's when a man like Brereton is most vulnerable. When he's running with eyes on somebody else, he's suddenly open. You wonder whether Geelong's homework has been done because Burton has had some problems in that area for what, maybe the second part of the season. Well, not so much as Rich's his ankles that have been the problem, Ian. Uh, but they've got a couple of players out that are under a cloud, Hawthorne. Now, Anthony Condon was getting treatment earlier in the week. Greg Deere was getting treatment. Scott McGuinness, we know, with the ankle. Brereton ankle. And also Curran. Now, they were getting treatment through the week, so they're not fully fit. Now, Brereton's going down to the forward pocket. Bounce back in the centre. Deer gets his hands to it. Now Damian Burke's hit towards half-forward. 
There's a free kick being picked out of it. It's going to Hawthorne. It'll go back to Dipia Domenico in the centre. Umpire asks the player to go back. Maybe it wasn't Dipia Domenico's kick. It looks as though it may go to uh, Curran. What a psychological boost that is for the Cats. There's Burton down in the forward pocket now. But the ball will be taken back to the centre. And the kick will be taken by Peter Curran. So Geelong all fired up. When you play for Coops in these finals, sure thing. Curran's kick wide to half forward. Marking contest up there. It's a clean mark for Dunstall. And Dunstall will have Hawthorne's first crack at goal from about 40 metres. We'll see this on replay. I would have had the Ruckman Burke dropping back to block it up on that occasion, but he was waiting back with Deer, the Hawthorne Ruckman. But you've got to get fellows down at the drop of the ball. Opportunity for the Hawks to square the ledger. Dunstall, the early minutes. Drop punt kick is true. Well, the score's locked away. And what a sensational start we've had. Jason Dunstall, the glamour forward, his first. His last outing, he kicked six goals against Essendon, but he is a very strong player and a very, very quick lead. Dermot Brereton. Interesting, Schultz hasn't gone back. Hawking now, standing with the Hawthorne champion. So we're back in the middle, good bounce too. Burke wins it down, right of the congestion. Dippia Domenico falls on top of it, slaps it out. Burke scrambles it forward. Kennedy the opportunity, sweeping hand pass over the top, sends Pritchard away. Down towards full forward, Burke the test here. He's taken the mark. What a courageous mark. And it's on on centre wing. Well, that was a fitness test for Dermot Brereton. He went back and he took it. And this is happening, as you can see. And this is going to be the order of the day. I thought it might have started earlier than now, but what a great mark you called it, Dennis. Dermot Brereton, as always, relishing being in the thick of things. Down in the first 15 seconds of the game, a chance to kick Hawthorne's second goal from 25 metres out. He's put it through. And that's how you show the opposition. Once you're injured, Dermot Burton didn't. He did it on the scoreboard. A courageous effort. Let's wonder how badly he is injured. Because he doesn't usually go down the way he did it after that first bounce. But what a courageous effort there. Darcy concerned with Dunstall on that occasion. Burke gets the tap out in the centre. Tuck can't quite control the ball. Now he does so. The hand pass goes wide. Condon. Condon on the run. Into the pocket. The kick goes over the top of Brereton and Hocking. Into the pocket proper. Now Dunstall. Can't control it. Darcy the first to recover. And Brereton's in the action. Down goes Darcy. A free kick to the Geelong player. And it was a crude effort there by Brereton. Players over the boundary line. Well, at least he's going to make them play for it. He's injured. He's got to go off, I suppose he's going to take one or two scalps with him. And this is exactly what Geelong were looking for, just a little altercation and it'll be on, as has already been on the centre wing. And Don, a couple of years ago, Geelong and Hawthorne figured in a rather nasty game where Lee Matthews was uh, Well, two involved. of those figures that players have figured in that, Bruns and Stephen Hocking are out there today. The kick by Darcy towards centre wing, the high flyer from behind is Deer, and he takes a good mark. The short right foot chip into the centre and the mark is taken by Kennedy. He's looking to play on, forced to kick with the left foot into the pocket. He's down as he kicks it and the free kick downfield will be taken by Curran, well within scoring distance. Well, actually, that was a stupid kick on that occasion by Gary Hockey. It was a stupid kick. Geelong have got a man up. They're a little bit loose at this stage. And a little excited too, the Cats. This was the doubt. So Curran, difficult angle, well within scoring distance. Magnificent kick by Curran, Hawthorne's third. Well, you can't afford to do what Gary Hawking has done. He's given away more free kicks this year than anybody else in the VFL. And really, that was a stupid play. Now, Burton in the hands of the doctor. That's Terry Gay on the left. Former Hawthorne pull back and a great centre-half forward as well. He's a club doctor, so Burton not too good. back in the middle. Just 
with over 20 and a half minutes remaining in this first quarter. Chance for Hocking. This is Anderson over the ball. Still he goes back to Hocking, gets the hand pass away. Bearsco from half forward. Long down towards full forward. Brownless is there. Off his hands. Collins dragged off it. Brownless an opportunity. Wides one bump. Claimed by McGuinness. Adler put down. Ears pressed into him. Platten gets the hand pass away. Ball out towards half back. And we'll have a ball up. And it's on again. Now that's, that's what he is. Bump by ears. My that word. Well, that's his, that's his stock in trade, and he fixed Ablett right up, took his eye off the ball, and went for the man. Pritchard boots it towards centre wing. He got a free kick. Schultz over the top, fisting away. It's out of bounds and will be thrown in. Here's the champ, runner up in this year's Brownlow. John Platten, boundary throwing, centre wing. Ablett shaking off the cobwebs. Burke. Brilliantly, decisively behind the pack. It's taken by Boss. A long kick down towards full forward. Brownless. Almost the mark. Brown is the call. McGuinness, the hand pass out wide. Sets Collins free. He swings it to the other side. Kennedy's got the run of it. He storms towards centre wing. Uses it wide. Buckenaro with Condon inside. He'll pull it back towards the pocket. Condon is still running down the ground. Dunstall's got it. Condon's on in the middle. Dunstall's turned around too slowly. And the whole play up in the pocket. Terrific mark by Dunstall in front of his face. Running at uh, full speed, Dunstall will kick from 45 metres. Hard up against the boundary line. Jason Dunstall, drop punt kick. Oh, hits the post. Well, it was nearly perfect. Dunstall has kicked one goal. Brereton has kicked one and Curran one. And Gary Ablett kicked the Cats only goal. Mark Yates will have to tighten up. He's on the half forward flank but John Kennedy again initiated that attack into the forward line for Hawthorne. Darcy to the members side. Dippy Domenico can't mark. Recovers quickly. Gets his kick away. The ball runs free at centre half forward. Condon gathers. The hand pass. Whitman into Anderson. He goes for goal and pops it through. Well Hawthorne are going for the ball and are starting to pay dividends. Geelong a little loose. Well, as the coach Malcolm Blight, I'll be telling them to pick their men up because there's just too many Hawks running free. And Hawthorne, a very, very skilled side. You can see that a great hand pass by Condon across to Whitman to Anderson and the young fellows combining. Great start by the Hawks. They lead by 19 points. Kennedy has been very busy. His own half back line across the ground into the path of Dippy and Dominico. Will it sit for him? Yes, it does. Played by Bruns, gets the hand pass away, goes again, slaps it out wide. Buckenara slipped. Winder's got it now. Ford of centre wing, dragged off the kick. Good desperation tackle and forces the error. Well done, Buckenara. Great tackle from Buckenara. We don't see ter terribly much tackling by Buckenara, but it's good to see him do it on the final. Lima went the wrong way, I thought. Think to be taken by Dia. 11 votes in the brown low, a much improved play. Shadows of the stand, high kick towards centre wing. Buckenara from behind, knocked away there by Burke. Dippy at Domenico, to no one in particular. Hocking taken high, and will get the free kick. The defensive side of right centre wing. Just under 18 minutes now, remaining in the first quarter. Geelong operating into a slight breeze. Hawthorne looking the far better side. Long kick towards half forward from behind Adler. The big leap couldn't mark. Knew the hurry kick back towards centre wing. Lindner in front. Met solidly by Curran coming through. And Lindner will get the three. And Lindner a little bit upset there. He plays on quickly. He's dumped as he kicks the ball. It That's goes the towards big. half forward. A free, no, no free kick. Sure played. Kennedy yeah. gets, takes the mark. He kicked. It's a little wide there for Condon. And it goes over the boundary line. So we'll have a throw in. It's between wing and half forward in Geelong's attacking half. The Cats one goal. Trail Hawthorne 4-1. Deer gets the ball to Platten. He's well tackled. The ball free. Yates taken to the ground by Deer. Too high. A, a free kick will be taken by Yates. About 60 metres from goal. The short pass is on. It's OK. Abner. They look for him a lot, oh, don't they, John? In, he's incredibly quick over the first couple of yards. He laid a tackle in the forward pocket earlier when the ball was there. It was just his sheer speed that got him. Again, look at the break he's got on McGuinness. And the kicking ability of Gary Ablett, I would think this distance would not be a problem. Platten and Cameron further afield having a bit of a bumping duel. Ablett now to shoot for goal. High kick. 
Goes past the square into the opposite pocket to Geelong. Mark taken by Dragon. Free, free kick, free kick. kick. Interference in the market contest, so the free kick will go to Deer in the back pocket. The short pass. Oh, risky. It comes off. The mark is taken by Anderson. Looking to play on. Now the umpire calls play on. Anderson's kick close to the boundary line. As a matter of fact, it's a little too far. It's out on the full. So the free kick will be taken out there for Geelong by Andrew Buse. He plays on quickly. Transfers play to Besto. Besto, the angle a little better from a standing start. Kicks it to the front of the square. Ablett flies high, can't mark. Langford stands his ground and gets the hand pass out to Pritchard. Pritchard at half back. Plays on quickly. The short chip left foot. Wide. Whitman runs onto it, gathers well, gets the hand pass back to Davide Domenico. Look at the pattern forming, his pattern at half forward. The short pass is magnificent, and Dunstall takes it 40 metres from goal. Great trip, Tremendous stuff, Dennis. Wasn't, you could see Hawks running all over the field. Teamwork, perfect. Dunstall for his second. He hooks the kick. And it's through for a behind. 4-2 plays one goal straight. Well, in boxing parlance, the Cats are on the ropes. Taking a lot of punishment at the present time. Paul Couch yet to handle the ball. Here's Darcy. In two minds. Comes member's side with a kick. Schultz in best position to mark. Up he goes in front. Couldn't hang on. Couch fumbles. This is Yates. One bounce. Draws a man. Almost. Team, Yates and Kennedy, of course it comes to Bruns, forward of centre wing, he goes down towards the pocket, wide of the mark, Ablett, he'll be in trouble as he turns, and swings it out of bounds on the floor. Well, he really didn't have any alternative then, he was going at a million miles an hour at the boundary line, all he could have done, I suppose, was handball the ball back over his head, but when you're moving at that speed, very hard to do. And Langford was a million miles an hour bearing down on him. Hawthorne looking for their first ever back-to-back -back premierships. Langford, centre wing, Deer, almost a spectacular mark. Condon, away to Bacanara, in the grasp, gets the kick away, and the mark is taken by Pritchard. The Hawks lead by 20 points. Pritchard's away, no pressure on. Simply runs away from Couch, goes long down towards Dunstall, favoured by the kick. Almost the mark, not paid. Schultz in desperate trouble. Platten on all fours. Play on is the call. Surely it deserves a whistle. What a magnificent effort by the little fellow there, Platt. He is a terrific player. He not only wins the ball, but he also lays some terrific tackles. It's team-orientated stuff. Bounce just inside 50 metres within scoring distance for the Hawks. Curran up high, but he put his hand on his opponent's shoulder, so the free kick will go to Schultz at half-back for the Cats. Schultz kicks it towards the members' wing area. In front, Burke can't mark. Dippy Domenico. Can't get the ball out. Finally finishes up with Platten. Platten with time to kick the ball long towards full forward. The marking contest. Hocking can't take it. Curran, snapshot. Hooks it across his body. Another goal to Hawthorne. The way you think the ball's running for Hawthorne, it's a debatable point because when a tap comes out of a pack, as it did on centre wing there, there was Hawthorne players and they seemed to be running free. Schultz was down there. And Dunstall over with the runner, John Kilpatrick. He could be injured, Dunstall. Yes, that's Barry Gavin, the physiotherapist, going out. Is that a big day? 32 to 6. Couch gets the hand pass away, taken by Yates. Indecisive. Whitner on the overlap, goes down towards half forward. Ablett out of the contest. Brown is over the top and hits the ground. This is Cameron running away from his own goal. 45 metres out, turns and fires. And it was wayward with a kick. It goes out of bounds on the bounce in the left ball forward pocket. Boundary throw in. Burke and Deer. Body to body. Ablett. Coming out of there by Pritchard. This is Yates to Bearstow. Grabbed by Anderson. Gets the kick away. About 20 metres out from goal. Knocked away by Langford. Ball runs free. Hawkins got it. Now it's a free kick. It's coming back. Pritchard was held without it. And he'll take this free about 20 metres out from his own defensive goal. Langford proving too strong on that occasion for Bill Brownless, the full forward in screen. Try and Bill, Bill Brown is trying body work and Langford too experienced and too big. He's got to move around Langford. 50 
metre penalty applied, so that brings Pritchard very close to the centre circle. Pritchard now kicks it towards centre half forward for the Hawks. Punch away. Oh, look at Divi Domenico. Full line, crashes through. The kick is astray. With the left forward pocket boundary throw in. Bad signs for Geelong. My word, Hawthorne playing with a little bit of arrogance at the moment. So the uh, statistics showing the handball is well in favour of the Hawks as we have a boundary throw in, in the left forward pocket. Goes over the top. Pritchard, snapshot. Close. Just misses to the right. 5-3, plays one goal. In that situation, Don, you've got to be goal side of the man you're marking, don't you? But also, Dennis, the ball went over the back. Geelong should have players because that is always a space. It's always open, and Hawthorne did it easily. Darcy kicks to the member's side. Big punch. Ball comes to Couch. His first touch. The 1989 Brownlow medalist. The kick is wide. Really, a bad football there by Couch. Applet. Anderson, the ball in the back, McGuinness. Good play by the youngster, McGuinness. He fights on with the two Geelong players outnumbering, and McGuinness takes it over the boundary line for throw-in. I just wonder how badly McGuinness is injured, because, again, he was 10 yards behind Ablett on that occasion. Geelong doing OK in the hit-outs. Deer doing better around the ground. Pritchard robbed of the ball. Hawking's away. Gets the hand pass away quickly to Yates, who boots it down towards full court. Brownlow's in best position. Great mark over the top. It was always going to be his. Bill Brownlow's. Was he off? He posed the question. He took that mark. I thought he might have took a step or taken a step over the mark. It was well off the ground. Brownlow's. 35 metres, stands at goal with a time. Well, Geelong may just regain a little bit of composure with that goal. They still trail, it's only their second. But everything going Hawthorne's way at the moment. Now watch this, a good mark, he gets up, puts the knee into the back of Langford. Great mark by the Geelong for forward. Well, they certainly needed that, Don. Billy Brown has kicked his first goal and the Cats second. Geelong getting behind on this occasion for this bounce running through the square. Burke up too early. Deer gets the tap. Curran can't break clear. Opportunity for Condon. Now he gets around on the right foot. He slips over. The kick now is a bit of a dust-up wide of where the play was. And the free kick is going to Dermot Burke. Didn't quite see what happened there, but the umpire very, very close to the action. And Burton takes the free kick. Just slightly forward of the centre wing. The short kick kick goes in, and Anderson takes the mark outside 50 metres. Anderson, who's kicked one goal, kicks it to the leading Dunstall. Has he recovered? He can't quite get the spring. The ball right in front of the goal square. Now Geelong get clear through Lindner. Lindner's kick wide. No one home for Geelong. Mew favoured by the bounce. He's well tackled. The ball runs free. Stoneham tries to give the ball over to Cameron. Cameron in there again. Helped out by Stone, and the ball somehow gets out the back to Couch. Couch is kicked towards the 50 metre line. Here's Pesto. Look at the tackle by Tuck. Irrepressible stuff by Tuck. The ball comes out towards Ayres. Ayres coolly kicks it 40 metres up towards the wing. No mark taken. A good punch away. Condon kicked off the ground by Burke. Wide towards centre wing. Bacanara leads in the race for the ball. Gathers well. Tackled by Malachalis. Unfairly, says the umpire. And the free kick will go to the Hawthorne champion, Gary Bacanara. Not much difference between that tackle and the one laid by Tuck on Bairstow. Bacanara hugging the boundary around the outer side. Brereton up, got hands to it, couldn't hang on. Falls to Anderson. Hurry kick down towards the pocket. Golden opportunity now. This is Curran. He can run all the way in and kick from 25 metres out. Stabs it. He's missed. He has. Well, they came down in a convoy in the Hawks. Not a good result. Not a very deliberate kick there by Peter Curran. He really had no conviction. Harry Stoneham hasn't had a possession as yet. This is Schultz, confronted by Brereton. And the bounds it goes. Bad fumble by Schultz. Both these sides looking to make history this afternoon. For the marks. Hawthorne doing better. Andre throw in. Hawthorne looking for back-to-back -back premierships. They've not done that before. Burton wins it down. Viewers has got it. 
And no side has come from as low as ninth to win a VFL Premiership. Condon on the other side. Geelong are trying to do that. Across it comes. Up in front, Dippy Domenico couldn't hang on. Knocked away by Bruns. Couch has got it now. In trouble. The traffic is heavy. Couch hits the deck. Picked up by Dippy Domenico. Down towards full forward. Knocked away by Darcy. We've got a whistle. And it will be a free kick, I think, for Bourne's way. Against Gary Hocking once again. Why wasn't the kick taken where the ball landed? He kicks the ball, then he's down. That must be a kick down to where the ball lands, surely. There was a couple of puzzling decisions already made by these umpires, Ian, and that's another one. Well, the umpire didn't deem it late. I think it would have been a certain goal, whereas here it's a little bit doubtful. Give you a minute ago from 55 metres out. Good looking kick. That's a goal. Robert did get a minico, the Wyndham knew as soon as that ball had left his boot, it was a goal. Everyone watched it go through, but he'd taken off back to his position on the wing. That's how confident he was when he made contact. A beautiful kick from over that 50-metre line. And Hawthorne certainly on a rampage, and they want back-to-back -back premierships. 6-4 plays two goals, close to time on in the first quarter. Deer gets the tap out. Couch's hand pass goes wide. Give me the minute go chips in. Gets the handball back to Deer. Deer thumps it up towards full forward. Meeting it strongly and positively was Darcy. The Geelong fullback kicks it back into the centre. The Geelong mark there is Good. taken by Burt. Great mark. They're being outmarked 13 to 4 so far in this first quarter. The kick wide. Opportunity for Bruns. Well tackled by Dippy Domenico. That could have been dropping the ball. Dippy Domenico appealing for the free kick. But the umpire having nothing to do with it. And he'll come in and ball it up wide at centre. Tackle's fairly even. Desperate stuff by both sides. The ball comes down towards Dippy Domenico. He ducks his head. The ball held in. Umpire will call for a bounce. Just forward of right centre wing for the Cats, who trail 40 to 12. This is Scott, who's been quiet. Anderson, busy. Couch goes back and takes the mark. Ball Couch, Western Ferris for the season. Woods half forward with the kick, intended for Ablett. Up he comes, he crashes into Dippy Domenico. That hurt. Dippy Domenico's got the free kick, he earned it. Again, courage shown by Dippy Domenico. Chip pass, Condon, wants to play on, that's ambitious, claimed by Bruns, hand passes, gains about 25 metres, views, couldn't control it, Richard goes in, Hawthorne free kick off the ball, Button is down. Geelong very untidy at the present time. Well, if these tactics sort of pay off, they'll need to be pretty close at three quarter time. Platten kicks inside 50. Darcy the leaper, fisting away, it comes down to Hawking, very tentative Hawking, Gunstall, sweeping hand pass, goal coming up, one of two, Bacchanara from 10 metres out. Well, Hawthorne are just so confident that when the ball is further up the ground, they really do back their teammate in to get the ball, they did on that occasion because they all ran away into the goal square, knowing that their teammate was going to get the ball. Now that's arrogance, maybe the fact but Hocking also fumbled on that occasion, a bad fumble. Look at the numbers Hawthorne have got forward. They've been kind fumble. Tremendous stuff by Hawthorne. 7-4 to two goals. No one really gets their hand of the ball, the Ruckman. Opportunity now for the Cats to get clear of that centre bounce. And it's Couch. And Couch very lucky to get on his feet. Ayers came at him again. Takes the free kick and kicks it wide. Too far out there for Bruns. Anderson too tall, taps it to the advantage of himself, goes back and gathers well, hand pass off to McGuinness, McGuinness screaming through halfback, kicks it in towards the centre, another Hawthorne mark taken by Condon, looking to play on, and the Cats arriving a little late, Condon, very creative player in the centre for Hawthorne, kicks it out wide, but a leaping, high leaping mark taken by Linda, and Bruce Linda holds that up, he's called play on, Curran takes the ball, kicks the Hawks back into attack in the 10 metre square. Burton! Clean mark in the goal square. What a great kick, too, by Curran. Well, they don't stop, do they, Dennis? The whistle hadn't gone. Linders goes to play on. Up by a course, play on, and away they go. 
Well, who would have thought that this game would pan out the way it is? It would be a much quieter, closer contest. Brereton from the edge of the square, directly in front. No problems. And a lot of changes have been made by the Geelong team. Robert Scott has come up on that occasion, went onto the wing, but now they've made the swap back again. Bruns has gone back onto the wing. He was in the forward pocket. Yates also came up the ground, leaving Kennedy. Dermot Brereton, two goals so far this afternoon. Just under four minutes remaining in the first quarter. And Hawthorne putting their stamp on this game. Long must get some goals and get them quickly. They're in trouble. Some of their prime movers just not touching the football. Still Stoner without a possession. Couch has been quiet. Bearstone not in the thick of it. Runs likewise. Here's Platten. He's in the thick of it. Looking at a minute ago. In trouble. Knocked away from him. He goes to ground. Tackled by Hawking. It's interesting, Dennis, when you look at that centre square, it's the Hawthorne players who are getting in front. Hawking caught behind Platten on that occasion. Another bounce. Rooks go at it. Dia backhands it down. Curran over his head. Spills to Scott. That's ambitious. Trying to go through there. Couch slapped out of there by Littner. Back inside the centre square with Dash Boss. But he left it behind. Pritchard dragged off it. Callis knocks it out. Up the ground by Gary Hawking. Ayers, who is 29 on Thursday, swings it to the outer side. Bacanara gets it to Condon. Condon goes over the top. Great courage shown by Curran. Down he goes. In goes Yates. Boss comes away with the ball. Drives it around the outer side. In front, Ayers. Almost a spectacular mark. In fact, it's played. Strength by Gary Ayers. And experience, Don. This is what the uh, all the scribes were talking about. The fact that Hawthorne have played. This is their seventh successive grand final appearance. And here's one of the great players of the caper, Gary Ayres. The short pass is not allowed. Ayres being asked to kick over the man on the mark. Magnificent conditions here at the MCG for the grand final. Ayres kicked towards centre half forward. One on one. No one can mark the ball. A big punch away by Schultz. Finishes up with Couch. He's well tackled. Geelong, look there, struggling hard. Tuck, good tackle. Deer, the Hawthorne forwards working overtime. Whitman goes long. The kick slews off the side of his boot. Chance for Boss. He taps it back to... It's Buse. Buse in the back pocket. Round onto the left foot goes Buse. The short kick is OK, and he finds Couch at half-back. Hawthorne forwards magnificent, keeping the ball in. Couch, long kick. There's a player there. Take the mark. Burke, no, it's punched away by Tuck. Play on, says the umpire. Cameron, his tackle is ineffective. Condon runs away with the football. Kicks it towards half forward. Bacchanala takes a diving mark, but it's over the boundary line, I would suggest, before he took the mark. So it's a free kick to the Cats to be taken at half back. What a magnificent effort there by Bacchanara. The ball comes back towards the centre wing area. Stone him up high, can't mark. The ball comes down towards Couch. Couch's left foot kick to the practice cricket pitch area. It's bouncing free. Goes through both players. Applet now a chance. But he's held close to the line by McGuinness. And the ball goes over for a boundary throw in about 25 metres around for the Geelong goal. Only seconds remaining in the first quarter. And it's been all Hawthorne. The Hawks 8-4. Lead Geelong. Two goals straight. The ruck contest. Deer doing pretty well. Hockey can't get away from Kennedy. Hockey tries to tap it to his team's advantage. Scott gets out. The left foot kick by Scott up towards the goal square. No one there for the Cats. McGuinness struggles hard with Stone and the ball goes over for another boundary throw. -in. The Hawks fanatical in their quest for back-to-back -back flags. Just a few seconds left now. Deer over the top. The punch by Burke. Stoneham gathers, but two tackles laid on by Hawthorne. One Pritchard, one Ayers. And down goes the Geelong player. Umpire calls for a bounce. So that's great stuff from Hawthorne's point of view. There's the siren. So the first quarter finishes with the scoreboard well to the advantage of Hawthorne. 8-4, 52. Geelong, two goals straight, 12 points. Started the second turn there. Hawthorne lead by 40 points. Dia wins it down. 
tuck slung taken by runs who hooks it down towards half forward for the cats it bounces in open territory storming up the ground is ablett mcginnis is after him ablett working it towards the boundary line slipped stoneham he's got it now at 50. barry stoneham hooks it down towards full forward it's bending back this will be close it bounces the wrong way brown has worked hard that ball just pitched at the base of the goal post went the wrong way it's quite interesting off the ball a lot of players are going for the man it is a very spiteful game Langford to bring the ball back into play for Hawthorne comes to the members side great mark taken by Yates who was probably Geelong's best player in the first quarter Mark Yates the drop punt kick to the front of the square marking contest a good punch away by McGuinness gathered by Brownless can't break the tackle of Condon and he does it pretty well the Hawthorne player he screams away from full back Anthony Condon kicks it wide out to the advantage of Bacanara but chipping in and taking a good mark as Bruns for the Cats Neville Bruns who was pretty quiet in the first term got the first kick in the second quarter kicks it into the pocket opportunity again for Condon but a free kick has been yeah, picked out of it by Collins. and Collins will be the recipient in the back pocket so Collins who got quite a few votes in the Brownlow medal this year much to the surprise of a few of the experts his kick was a poor one and it's out of bounds on the full the short kick in towards center half forward and a good mark taken by Flanagan and Hughes and Pritchard at it behind play the two angry little lands so Flanagan on the 50 meter line and sometimes can surprise the footballing public with his kicking ability this is a great kick by Flanagan right into the square Geelong mark Stoneham we've got some high flyers down there Ablett, Brownless and Stoneham and Stoneham who kicked a point just a few moments ago has a chance to kick the Cats third and a very very badly needed goal for Geelong the angle not bad for a natural right footer that Barry Stoneham is and he pumps it straight through. Goal umpire and field umpire conferring. It looks like it's another kick. Yes. Down over the mark. That missed, that kick. Actually, I thought it missed too, Dennis. It well, did. Stoneham's indicating that it's gone through. He's a bad judge. He's getting it again because it missed and the umpire now really? invoking the 50. Really, you shouldn't miss from that angle that where he was. That was a bad kick by Stoner. He would argue the man came over the mark. Well, interesting one. And can he just walk up to the man on the mark and dribble the ball over the boundary line? I think I'd be taking that risk at this stage. Geelong trailing by 39 points. Don't say you'd do that. Now Stoner, his second chance from only metres out. And this time he doesn't miss. Well, Geelong, a little bit of respectability on the scoreboard. Hawthorne are weakened by the fact that Platten has gone off the ground. In actual fact, Platten is now walking around the boundary line. And he'll be going in to the dressing room. Now, obviously, he's got a whack on the nose. He's holding that nose. And now uh, Hawthorne have got Whitman. Sorry, Pritchard roving. And there's Platten. Not too good at all. Let's go down to Michael Roberts, Michael. Yes, we're quarter time. Dermot Burton assured everyone that he was fine, but Johnny Platten went there. He was tested for concussion and went down on one knee. They took him straight off, and as you can see, he's going straight up the race. That's a blow for the Hawks, perhaps the league's most courageous player. Going into the rooms, we've got a new ball. The MCG, and away we go again. One down by Flanagan that time with a backhand. Hughes comes away. There's the time remaining. The Cats are looking better. Hughes goes long down towards the pocket. Ablett! Oh, what a mark! Well, that's what we came to see, Dennis. This man is unbelievable. Incredible strength, I think, is the word here. Incredible strength. Cleared by Hawthorne to Geelong in 1983. Then we come back to Hawthorne. Check side kick. Oh, nonchalant. Well, I'm just shaking my head in amazement. Nothing surprises me with this man. He was just so nonchalant in the way that he lined that up, put that ball across his body, and it swung left to right. Interesting enough, the way they got it out of the centre. There it is. Flanagan got the hit out, and Hughes 
coming through behind the ball into open space. Gary Ablett. Back in the middle. Via putting them down towards half forward. That's Hawthorne. Schultz has got it. Well, almost. Still, he battles after it. Picked up by Cameron. Scrambles a kick across the goal face, and Buckinara takes the mark. And there was some fumbling there by Geelong. They took their eyes off the ball. Can't handle the pressure. Schultz one, and Cameron two. Why would the defender go that way, Don? Pressure, Ian. Pressure. Oh. <laughs> you turn onto your left side and kick it to the boundary right. line when the pressure's on. Well, you don't have time to think, do you? Makanara. From about 20 metres out directly in front. He won't miss. Through she goes. Well, that's things you just cannot do in finals. And it's not a good sign as far as Geelong is concerned. To see their four centre-half back, Schultz, fumble in the way he did. He's got a big body. He's there for his strength and uh, his doggedness. And he's got to put himself in. And also Cameron. There it is. He took his eye off the ball, went over the ball. Now watch this one by Cameron. Bad play, uh, Geelong. And actually, Schultz coming off for that mistake, obviously. Yates is picking up Curran. Again, Geelong get the tap out, but they can't take it away. Anderson gets a quick foot to the ball. Kennedy takes Hawthorne into their forward pocket region. Brew. Too high. It's too big, too strong it? for Stephen Hopping. It's just too big. That's the second time he's done that. That's a matchup they can't have. Well, they're in trouble with Schultz, one of their taller defenders. Now serving time on the interchange bench. And Brereton is only about 30 metres from goal. Perhaps closer. Dermot Brereton. Punt kick. Straight through for a behind. Brereton has kicked two goals, one, Hawthorne 9-5, and Geelong at the start of the second term mounting some sort of a challenge, but the kick by Cameron to give Buckanara a goal, a bad mistake. It's Tim Darcy, step full back, get in two minds, looks towards centre half back, push it up surely, well done, Tim has got the free kick, Coming from half back, Boots through centre, Stoneham on the lead, and Phil Stretch takes the mark in his chest. Towards centre wing, Stoneham, chip passes inside, looking for Hocking, they're closing on him. Pushed away by Collins, bursting away, tuck. Sends play back towards the half forward line for the Hawks, Morrissey, knocked away by Boss. This is Bruns, kicks into the Hawthorne player, however, it ricochets forward, taken by Scott, inside. Oh! Under. Still they go after him. I think we had a minute go through his legs. Knocked on by Buckinara cleverly into the path of this man Anderson. He goes down towards the half forward line. Curran, as cool as you like, feeds it inside to Morrissey. Over the top to Whitman. Whitman 25 metres out and closing. And I think he's got it. No, he hasn't. It was close, but not good enough from there, especially given the build up. Well, it was a bad miss, Dennis. They did everything right there, Hawthorne and Don. You went, ooh. Well, you when can't you saw one of the Geelong well, players. Well, that's right. It was Linda on that occasion who took his eye off the ball. You can't afford to do it in finals. Look what happens. Yes, the opposition certainly uh, take advantage of those sort of mistakes. So Darcy kicks the ball to the outer side this time. Oh, Bacanara flies high. Can't mark. Penalised. Now opportunity for Morrissey. Curran swoops on the loose ball. Curran's kick across his body. Up towards full forward. The high flyers. No one can mark the ball. Stephen Hocking gets it out the back to Buse. Great tackle by Dunstall. Terrific stuff by the Hawthorne forwards. Burton will kick a goal. No mistake. Dermot Burton kicks his third. The Hawks go marching on. It's a massacre at the MCG. Well, it was a great tackle by Dunstall. But what arrogance. Maybe you could call it stupidity on Buse's part. Trying in a final to run around. This is not a home and away game. Now watch this. Look, he thinks he's going to run around, but you can't do that in a final. And what a magic tackle by Dunstall. That was terrific stuff by the Hawthorne forward line. Dermot Brereton. Three goals. There's our scoreline. Cameron towards half forward for the Cats. Here's the only man there. It's the Hawks towards their half-forward line. Watkins bounce down there for Whitman. 
Couch leads back in the race, gets around Morrissey. What a good hand pass. Just gave it away. Well, almost. Bue's got a second opportunity. Went off the ground. This is tough. Swims it out wide. Into the path of Kennedy. It bounces back over his head. That was bad luck. Cameron slips over. Inside the Linda though. Linda dragged off the kick as a result. It spills down towards half or Tuck brilliantly done, not once but twice. Eventually lost it though. Catch the hand pass out wide. Hamilton's got it. Left half forward. Hamlet's in front. Strong mark. Not easy to mark. That ball was coming quickly. Yeah, hard that. marks to take, aren't they, Dennis? In front of your face like that. Probably the toughest. You see this on replay. The ball out in front. They're hard to take. Ablett. They desperately need a goal. Ablett, look at that. Straight through the middle. He is a cool fellow, Ablett. I suppose that is the difference between champions and also Rams. You see his teammates in the ground, down the ground, and various other places on the ground, fumbling under pressure, but he is just so cool. That's his second shot for goal in this quarter, and he just did it so well. His first one was just confidence plus, and this too. He's just got so much confidence in his, in his ability. Why not? He's a champion. Gary Ablett's kicked three goals out of the Geelong score of five. And Hawthorne, 10-6. Still lead very comfortably. The ball at centre-half forward. Chipping in is Cameron. The kick up towards centre-half forward for Geelong. It goes through Gary Ayres. Tumbling away was Gary Ablett. Swooping on the ball. Now Hamilton kicks it across his body into the forward pocket. High over the top views of Collins. Can't control it, and it goes out for boundary throw in the right forward pocket for Geelong. This is a terrific effort by Hawthorne when you consider that Brereton's injured, Platten's also gone off. Very good team, the Hawks. Very disciplined. Flanagan now doing the ruck work against Deer. Applet over the top. Snapshot by Gary Applet. This is close. Oh, it is mercurial stuff. Oh. I get the feeling momentum is starting to shift in this game. Listen, this is where you need television. You cannot explain what that man got. That's a, oh, a picture's worth there. a thousand. If, you, if you're down there in the Geelong jumper, that watch, must lift you. Must lift. Watch it here. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, it's but magic. It must lift the Geelong players. Oh, let's hope it does. We're back in the middle. Geelong making another run at the Hawks. Pritchard out of the middle. There's the difference. Ripley's in front. Patton's off the ground. Brereton is hurt. Geelong still not without a chance. Lidner inside the centre square with Ablett on fire down the ground. Almost gives the ball away. Tuck towards half forward. Malakellis has got the run of it. He storms away, Malakellis. Back towards half forward. Brownless is the target. Langford comes over the top. It falls behind them. This is Ayres. Ayres back towards centre wing. Lunging at it, Morrissey. Boss is over the top of it. Gets to his feet. He's outnumbered four to one. Dragged off it by Anderson. Away comes Morrissey. Kicks inside 50. Burton pushed in the back. No free kick. Darcy close to the boundary line. Far. There was Dunstan. Dennis. Well, that's the speed that he oh. does possess. We saw Adlett do a tackle earlier. And it's the speed of these two forwards. And Dunstall possesses the same speed over the first couple of yards. I was going to say, barring any help, he was in trouble there, Darcy. And so it proved Dunstall superb. Karen to shovel it out, big pack, and we'll have a ball up. The ball about 45 metres from the Hawthorne goal. Geelong is Rob Hawk, our Prime Minister, interested spectator. Geelong certainly don't need a Hawthorne goal at this stage. The ball gets clear to Malakalis. The hand pass to Stephen Hockey. The Cats may have settled down a little bit. Hamilton pulled off the ball. Pritchard, strong as Malakalis. Umpire picks out a free kick. It's going Geelong's way. The advantage has been paid. Hamilton comes away with the ball. The left foot pass in towards the pocket. Brownless gathers well. Tries to crash his way through. Up fire calls play on. And Condon kicks Hawks. Up towards half forward. The ball a little bit too far there for Pritchard. And we'll have a boundary throw in between wing and half forward for Hawthorne. And Hawthorne have made a change. Langford has gone to full back on Ablett. Interesting when Brownless got that last ball. All the Geelong players running past, going on ahead. No one stayed to support. This is Brereton doing well in a tight situation. Tried to knock it out. Whitman's in there too. He's at the base of all of that and will have a ball up. McGuinness is picking up Brownless. Glorious sunny day here in Melbourne. 
temperature about 20 degrees. Pretty even in the rucks, as you can see. Bedrooms along slightly. Tuck gets the cross to Anderson. Standing start. Down towards the pocket. Darcy coming up to meet the ball. Awkward bounce. Dunstall keeps it in. Hello, Wayne Holmes. No, he didn't. He's come back to be thrown in. Just as well for Geelong. Darcy was out number three to one. She has four to two on that occasion then, Dennis. Hawthorne, gee, they've got so much faith in the fellows around the ball that they take off and move forward off the ball. And they did on that occasion four to two. Wide division them there. Here's the boundary throw in. Rucks go at it. Behind by Curran brilliantly to Pritchard, who pulls it back. It's bending too far. Through for a minor score. Just over 12 minutes remaining in this first half, and Hawthorne, who led by 40 points at quarter time, lead by 30 now. And here's Darcy, bring it in. A sellout crowd, close to 100,000. Darcy goes to the outer side. Winder was up, fisted away there nicely by Pritchard. The hand pass comes out, that's got a good ball. Hamilton's away. Hamilton goes long down towards the pocket. Everett couldn't hang on. Hawthorne have got the numbers. Mew takes the hand pass from Langford. Mews kicked towards centre wing. Hawthorne mark. Pippi Domenico standing his ground. And a big surprise to him. I would guess the ball lands in his lap. Play answers the umpire. And Dippy Domenico runs around onto his right foot. Kicks it towards centre half forward. No mark taken. Curran. Good recovery by Yates. He's well tackled. Gets the hand pass wide to Flanagan. Flanagan's short pass is effective. The mark has been taken by Hamilton, who started on the interchange bench and has been a good player since coming on. Hughes takes the kick. Heck, Hughes kicks the goal. Now, I was wondering just before that boot left Hamilton, the ball left Hamilton's boot, that Hughes was by himself. The fact was that Collins was over the other side of the ground. I don't know what he was doing, but you can't afford to do that in a final. Look, watch this. Now, further down the ground, Hughes is left by himself. Where's Collins? There he comes in the screen. Too much latitude. Well, they are beatable, Hawthorne. That's an example. Let's play by their defence. Back in the centre, Hawks lead by four goals. Flanagan, who's done pretty well in the ruck contest. Dippy Domenico takes it out for the Hawks. Up towards half forward. The bounce goes over the top of the players' heads. Good play by Dunstall. Down to Pritchard. Pritchard goes for goal and misses. 10-8 plays 7-1. And we're more than halfway through the second quarter. His third point for the game, Darren Pritchard, the former Tasmanian and recruit of the year two or three years ago. Well, if you go back to round six, Geelong led at half time in their only meeting this season by 49 points as Flanagan takes the mark on the other side. The Hawks came back to win by eight. And they kept 51 goals between them that day. And now Flanagan has been spoken to, but he'll get to keep the ball. Luckily, lucky. Yes, Give it a minute, goes, shouldn't be hanging on. Flanagan goes towards centre wing. Scott almost the one-hander, taken by Stoneham. Again, lack of numbers. He beats two, gives it to Buse, he pulls it back across his body, and a strong mark is taken by Whitman. What's Buse thinking is he can't go that way and then bring it back into the square centre. Whitman, low kick towards half forward. The Hawks lead in all directions to the ball. Curran, causing a lot of headaches on the forward line for the Cats, but the hand pass away. Oh, down with Pritchard. That would have hurt. Geelong have got the run of it. Lima the hand pass out wide. The Cats are looking better towards half time. Hamilton hoisted high down towards half forward. Brown is storming up, chests the ball, and it runs out of bounds. It's difficult. Dennis with though, just a little bit of favour by the bouncing ball there, and they could have been right up in that goal square again. Pritchard all right behind play two. It's a nasty one he copped. Just under 10 minutes remaining. First half. Couch has been quiet. Ayers does well. Deft deflection across to Pakanara, who has taken high. It's a real aid free kick down the ground. Ayers remonstrating with Brown was behind play. Well, that's the first one of those free kicks that has been picked up. And really, there was nothing in it. The free kick to be taken by Morrissey on centre wing. Hasn't wasted any time. The kick towards half forward. The free kick being picked out of it. It's going to Geelong. A more form player. Perhaps Darren Pritchard, it may have been, keeping Lindner out of the marking contest. Lindner takes the free kick, kicks it back towards half forward. Stoneham can't mark. Cameron, great hand pass to the advantage of Hamilton. A little check for him. Left foot kick by Hamilton, bounces. Just is it on the line? Out of bounds on the full. It must have only been centimetres over the boundary line. The free kick to be taken in the back pocket by Langford. 
They're hard balls to run onto. You just hope that they sit up, and it didn't sit up for Hamilton on that occasion. The luck of the bouncing ball, eh, Don? We'll go with the Cats. Langford has the ball. The first kick not allowed. Field umpire asking Chris Langford to do it all again, and he kicks it now outside the 50-metre line. Big punch by Flanagan. Gary Hocking runs onto the ball, runs over the ball. Chance now for the Cats. Hocking knocks it back. Besto crashes his way through. Kicks the Cats towards centre-half four. Marking contest, no one can grab the football. Whitman, tackled by Browners. Onto the ball now is Hamilton. Opportunity for Ablett. Gets the hand pass back to Buse. What can Andrew Buse do with this one? He goes for goal. The long drop punt kick into the square. No mark. Kick off the ground. Behind the player Browns. Gee, that could have been a miraculous goal. Involuntary action, I think it struck him on the boot. Good effort by Couch, and he was outnumbered one to two. But also Buse again, he was in trouble as soon as he got the ball. He's trying to dodge Pax, just do the instinctive thing, which is put it on your boot. Here's Kennedy booting towards the outer side. Deer outnumbered. Hamilton over the top, Lipman, who's been busy in this turn, tracking the ball towards the boundary line, shrugs a tackle, pulls it back towards the kickoff line. Steinem's in front, behind McGuinness. Strong mark. 42 again, Hawthorne's favour. McGuinness in doubt earlier in the week. Deep in his own defensive area, across the ground. Intended for Collins out there. Collins, unchecked, takes the mark right against the boundary line. Casual attempt to kick it downfield. Buckenara off the ground cleverly. Into the path of the running tuck. He runs up towards centre wing, well shepherded. Releases the ball towards half forward. Over Burton's head. It's knocked away by Yates, but Burton's going to get a free kick. Out near the boundary at left half forward. Pucked out of the marking contest. Curran in the forward pocket on the smaller hockey. He spelled trouble so far for the Geelong defence. Dunstall put his hands to it, couldn't hold on. Ball spills out of bounds and will be thrown in. The league's leading goal scorer this season, coming into this afternoon, 134. So far, one. Yates over the top of Brewer. The ball comes out towards Couch. He can't break away. Four Hawthorne players doing the tackling. Now it gets clear to the Brownlow medalist. His hand passes astray. Swooping on the ball, Bacanara. Great tackle by Lindner. Pritchard in there for Hawthorne, and the umpire will call for bounce. So that was a great tackle, wasn't it? And Linda appealing for the free kick. Why aren't I rewarded for a great effort? By retrieving the football. And a bounce will take place about 55 to 60 metres away from the Hawthorne goal. The bounce favours Brerick. Gets it down to Pritchard. He's well tackled by Buse. Yates has pulled off the ball. So has Brewer. A real struggle at half forward for Hawthorne. And the umpire calls again for a bounce. Would you like to know the seriousness of Brewer's injury? Because he didn't look too good initially, but what boy isn't he putting in now? So with six minutes left in the second quarter, we have a match on our hands. Geelong have fought back. They trail by four goals. Chance for Bacanara ducking and weaving. Ooh. Curran. Now the ball finishes with Hughes and Geelong get out of trouble. The kick by Hughes in towards the centre. Will it bounce to Scott? Crashing his way through New, but he's well tackled. Ball comes free. Kennedy tackled by Stoner. New tackle. Irrepressible stuff by the Cats in the centre. Couch can't break away. Stoner can. Gets it to Linder. He's hooked around the neck by Bondon. And Geelong get away with the free kick. He doesn't waste any time. Flanagan's on the end of it. Inside 50 goes Darren Flanagan. The drop punt kick. He hooks it. And it's out of bounds on the full in the left forward pocket, and he should have made more of that. He should have been, you dead right. They're getting their appetite, though, along at the moment. An interesting Flanagan on, he's putting a lot of pressure on Deer around the ground. McGuinness out of the back pocket yet again. High kick, members side. Big pack at the fall of the ball. Buse went over the top, couldn't hang on. We'll have a ball up. Be on the ground, Buse. There's a player there, 32 for Geelong, who's been a tremendous player for them in their previous three finals. He's been very, very quiet. Gary Hawk. Lacking around the packs. Tuck is doing a fine job on Bearstow. Bearstow just five possessions so far. There he is again. Bearstow in the picture, but Tuck does nicely. Gets it across, just paddling it towards Ayers. He hooks it around the boundary. From behind, Boss should have punched. Why didn't he punch? Oh, God. Morrissey's got the ball. The defensive side at centre wing. 
Kicks it wide. Pritchard runs out of it. That could prove costly. Pritchard from half forward pulls it back. What a superb kick. Dunster. Ask the question again, Dunster. Why didn't he punch? Yes, this simple mistakes that Geelong are making in the back half of the ground, aren't they? That are well, costly. We, we mentioned that one of there, but also this was a good move here because Darcy went to where the ball was. Dunstall did. Dunstall. Sneaks it through for a goal. Well, what happened on that occasion was that Darcy, who was Dunstall's opponent, left him thinking that Pritchard, which normally players do do in that situation that Pritchard was in, was go around the boundary line. But he went in towards the centre, and at least Pritchard had presence of mind to steady look, and he saw Dunstall by himself, and he was just miles away from Dunst uh, Darcy on that occasion. Good play, Hawthorne. So it's time on in the second quarter, and the Hawks go forward again through Condon. Nearly the mark there to the catch Malakalos. Morrison swoops on the ball. A hand pass over the top. Whitman. Can he break the tackle? A left foot snap by Whitman. Another goal to Hawthorne. Well, we asked the question, or begged the question earlier, why didn't Boz punch the ball from behind? Well, you've got to ask the question again. Why did Malakalos try and mark from behind? If you're playing discipline football, and Geelong have done it this year, he should have punched a little earlier than that, got the ball forward. But went Hawthorne's way again. He wouldn't have played that mark. Very skilled kick there by Whitman. Whitman kicks his first goal. Hawthorne kicked their 12th, and all of a sudden there's a six-goal gap. Three and a half minutes left in the second quarter. Flanagan and Deer. Gary is by himself. Back half of Hawthorne's. Flanagan gets the tap out, out towards the centre wing. Kennedy, and there's that man Don Scott mentioned, Gary Ayres, at centre half back. He kicks it wide. Tuck. Hawthorne down and something again, just before half time. Tuck. Waits till Bearstow does the tackling. Gets his kick away towards half forward. And a great mark taken by Morris, who's not paid. He flips the ball out wide. Attempted kick off the ground by Pritchard is a stray. It's Dunstall, rather. And the kick over the boundary line on the full, so the free kick will be taken for Geelong by Darcy. Didn't things looked all right there for a while for Geelong, but they've let two crucial goals slip through. They could have gone in at half time, only 24 points down. It's Yates. Kicks it from the back pocket out towards the wing. Flanagan takes a good mark over Deer. Flanagan, who's lifted Geelong's ruck. It's coming on the kick. You at centre half back. Kennedy. The kick goes off the side of his boot. Bounces free. Oh, Guerrero. I wasn't going for that ball. I was going to pick up Mark Bairstow and knock him over the fence. Boundary throw in just slightly forward of centre wing. In Hawthorne's attacking half. I think Bairstow's got good vision like Don Scott. Saw him from a long way off. There's the time remaining till half time. Flanagan wins it down. Boss in trouble there. Locking on all fours. Couch. Oh, very solidly. Here's was the man who applied the tackle. Down with Anderson off the ball. Pritchard meantime gets them forward. The word to Cameron has been reported for putting Anderson down. Well, two on fires, actually. Happened off the ball. About five metres away from the action. Well, a lot of that has been going on today, Dennis. The umpire's picked one or two, but he hasn't picked enough of them. And finally, someone's reported. A little sniping. It was Anderson. 12-8 to 7-2. Four of those seven goals for Geelong have come from the boot of their champ, Gary Ablett. Hawthorne prevailing. Anderson, a long kick. They can test about 30 metres out. Lindner over the top has paid the mark. It's not good football. OK, he took the mark, but behind he should have punched the ball. He's in the back pocket. Why Hawthorne take the mark? Lidner. Oh. I saw Boss in the deep trouble. Boss, the hurried kick towards centre wing. Flanagan goes up, sandwiched between two Hawks. Running behind Couch, great tackle. Collins should have been rewarded, wasn't. It spills to Mew. Puts it back around the boundary line. Over the top. Mew's, I think, was out of bounds. Double the cross. The boundary umpire says that was a mark, surprisingly. Mew's. In the shadows of the stand, through centre. Lidner. Taking marks all around the ground. He's had a good turn. 
Lindner is uh, on centre wing member side. Plays on now. Kicks it towards centre half forward. The Hawthorne players in front of Gary Apple. Two on one. McGuinness and Brownless. Just inside 50 metres, and Geelong, within scoring distance, badly need a goal just before half time. There's a minute left in this first half of the 1989 Grand Final. Tuck on all fours. Gary Hockey can't get through. Couch gathers well. Good tackle, Condon. Pritchard with skill gets out, goes after it, takes one bounce with pace, kicks Hawthorne up towards full forward. Dunstall, a million miles away, you can see Dunstall going to take that mark. Tremendous at keeping his footing and very strong. And what a good kick by Pritchard. Set up by a bounce down. As Tucker got it to Pritchard and a magnificent kick by the full row. Dunstall. Goal number three. No, he hooks the kick. The umpire runs right across and it's through for a behind. A very good kick there by Jason Dunstall. Tim Darcy. So Gates will kick it in. Fine job Michael Tuck is doing. Tagging Bearstone has had more possessions. In this term he set things up as Yates goes to the outer side. Flanagan up. Via leads back in the race. Falls over. Anderson close to the boundary line. Played it onto the leg of Hockey. Looks inquiringly at the boundary line. Fire for the Nova. Half-time siren. And there's our scoreline. The Hawks 12-9-81. Geelong 7-2-44. Well, the Cats came back midway through the term, but Hawthorne steadied and finished full of running. A couple of costly errors by the Cats in defence have hurt them. Ablett and Brereton living up to their billing. Both of them superstars of the VFL, and they've played like that in the first half. Ablett has four goals. Brereton put down, has three. He came back to haunt the Cats. Half time, Hawthorne 12-9, Geelong 7-2. Start of the second half, 12-9 is 7-2. Can the Cats come back? We're about to find out. Dippy Domenico, tackled by Hawking, manages the kick. It went about 10 metres. Off the ground, eventually forward by Condon towards half forward. Ball free. Lidner played pretty well this afternoon. Comes away from half back and boots towards half forward. This is Ayers, quickly onto the boot, back towards midfield. Geelong have got the numbers. Hawking in deep trouble. Great tackle by Tuck. Ball was jarred free, off the ground by Ayers. It comes out towards the wing. At close quarters, Morrissey got it across towards Ayers. Well done by Boss. He beat two of them. Kicks it about 25 metres. Tuck over the top fisting. Malakellis was pushed in the back, and he'll get the free kick on centre wing. And Pritchard not too good in the centre of the ground after that first bounce down. Got collected. Malakellis kicks the ball towards half forward. Nearly a Geelong mark the couch. Kick off the ground attempted by Deer. Picked up by Tuck and kicks Hawthorne towards centre half forward. Hawthorne have the numbers when the ball hits the ground. It's Whitman's magnificent handball to Buckmanara to Morrissey. Morrissey to an open goal. A bad kick by the Hawthorne half forward Ruck Rover. And he misses to the right. No sign of Platten on the bench either, Ian. And also Ayers a loose man in defence, although he's now been picked up by David Cameron. Johnny Platten, who suffered a very heavy knock in the first quarter. Still off the ground, as Dennis said. Tim Darcy kicks it in towards half-back. Great mark to Yates. He plays on quickly. Hand pass to Boss. The Cats up towards half-forward. Mew at the back. Better judgment from Stoneham. And Chris Mew takes the mark for Hawthorne. He plays on quickly and kicks it wide to Langford on centre wing. Langford looking to play on, slipping and sliding. Now regains his composure and kicks Hawthorne up towards their half-forward line. The ball over the back. Yates is the first to recover. He shrugs the tackle pretty well, Mark Yates, and runs away from half-back. Kicks it in towards the centre of the ground. Stoneham takes the mark. Geelong have started a little better in this second half. They trail badly and they need to kick a lot of goals in this third quarter. The ball comes out the back. Ayres nearly tackled by Scott. Scott's been a quiet player. Ayres' his kick is wide over the boundary line on the full. The free kick to Geelong in that forward pocket. Well, he did it uh, well initially, Ayres, but then straight over the boundary line for an experienced player, an unforgivable mistake. Cameron has the ball. Very tight. But a real chance to give the Cats some impetus at the start of the third term. Usually a goal scorer of some note is David Cameron. So let's see what he can do with this one. 
Stabs at it. And misses badly. Kicks it behind. 7-3 to 12-10, the early going in the second half. For the MCG, Gary Ayres to bring the ball in. And Hawthorne playing the huddle, they've broken. Good kick. McGuinness. It was Condon, it was Condon. This is Langford. On centre wing. Lace the ball. Ross takes the mark. Ross, forward at right half back. No one's standing the mark. Plays on and kicks towards half. Well, we've got a 50, 50. now. Technical Don that 50 metres. I couldn't see what it was for, Ian. Dipper I ran across the mark, I thought. Well, if he ran across the mark, that's different 50. No one was standing the mark. This is Boss. Goes in short. And the mark is That's 50? That's got to be 50 metres, surely. Not forthcoming. But what a great mark by Flanagan. If you've ever been in that position, you're waiting for the ball to come to you. It seems to take an eternity because the defenders are bearing down. It was Langford on that occasion, bearing down on Flanagan. They need this one. Flanagan from 40 metres out. Hits the post. The fates are cruel. Well, if ever they needed some luck, it was there. As I said, they've started this third quarter fairly well. Again, Hawthorne breaking to the outer side. Ayres kicks it. It's a two-on-one situation. Langford can't mark. Condon does a good shepherding job. Couch can't quite control the ball. Great play, Buse, but he's well tackled by Condon, and that's where Geelong are falling down. Free kick has been picked out of it. It's going to Hawthorne, and it'll be taken by Whitman. Buse looks as if he's playing on the back line now, not roving as he was earlier in the game. Whitman's kick towards half forward. High flyers were Yates and Lindner. The ball comes free to Pritchard. Chance now for Lindner. Get, just gets his left foot to the ball. Two on one again. Hawthorne outnumbering. Mew comes away with the ball. Mew's kick towards half forward, drops in short, and Pritchard takes the mark at centre half forward. He plays on quickly, transfers play to Condon. Condon's hand pass over the top, hospital stuff to Kennedy. Kennedy gets away, but the Cats will get out of trouble. Hamilton's quick kick. It's to the advantage of the Cats because a player out here on his own is Bairstow. Hasn't had many touches, but this could be important. Bairstow's kick towards half forward. Ablett runs onto the ball and crashes into Collins. Langford's there, and Ablett gives away the free kick to Andrew Collins. A little unfortunate for the Cats. Collins out of the back pocket. Centering kick. Oh, well done by Brownlee. back, Guinness. It's coming back. Well, that's bad luck for the Cats. Brownlee showed a lot of courage, running with the flight of the ball. Also, a lot of anticipation, but what he has done was jump onto Pritchard's foot, and again, Pritchard not too good. Means on. What are happening in this term so far? Collins towards centre wing. The target is Burriton, hocking, fisting away. Slapped out of bounds by Bearstow. So we've got a throw in. Mark Bearstow. Only six possessions so far this afternoon. Five kicks, one hand pass. 82 plays 46. Just under 20 minutes remaining in this third term. Geelong need to move and move quickly. This is Gary Hocking, freed by the tribunal to play in this game earlier in the week. In fact, they never got that far. And Adler on the end of that kick. He is a magnificent mark of the ball. Especially when it's high in the air as it was then. Just look at this man's balance. Gary Adler. He's kicked four so far. Marvellous lone hand on the forward line. Kicks, and the margin is back to 30 points. Well, he hasn't blotted his copy book. That's his fifth goal, Gary Ablett. And he is a very, very good player, Gary Ablett. He's come up in this final. You see a lot of pl players of his calibre, Gary Ablett, who play well in home and away games, yet when the pressure is applied, they go missing in a final. But he has not gone missing today. It hasn't been an easy game. As I mentioned, he was collected by Ayres earlier, has recovered and playing very, very well. So the Hawks lead by 30 points. Katz mounting some sort of a challenge. Flanagan doing well in the ruck contest. Couch, can he break the tackle? He just gets his left foot to the ball. No one hard. Ayres drops a sitter. Unbelievable stuff. The Cats, can they gather the ball? No, it slips through the hands. Now they've 
got it at centre half forward. But Collins' desperation. Scott bumps him off the ball. Scott goes after it again. He has the football, the hand pass, intercepted by Ayres. Ayres close to the boundary line, and the Hawks are out of trouble. The kick comes up towards centre wing. Morrissey close to the football. Four on one now. Geelong must get possession here. Lindner's hand pass is sloppy. Hawking nearly falls over. They're running around in circles, the Cats. Hawking's kicking towards the centre. A Geelong mark, no, Malachalis drops it. They're still outnumbering in that centre circle area. Bairstow's sweeping hand pass out the back. Buse, a left foot kick by Andrew Buse. Up towards the goal square. Ablin is blocked off it. Beautifully by Langford. Langford's kick from mid-air. Goes back towards centre half forward. Stolen fumbles. There's a lot of fumbling going on. Bairstow's beautifully tackled. But it's too high since the umpire. And I couldn't see it. Yeah. Yes, I, could. I agree with the umpire on that occasion. But what the umpire's got to watch out there is when the ball has le left the vicinity, players are running in and collecting players well off the ball. And it's dangerous stuff. Well, there was the right arm over Bairstow's shoulder on the replay. So Mark Bairstow has the free kick. He'll have to kick from about 40 metres. Directly in front. A very important kick for the Cats. Bairstow, low trajectory, very straight. Well, Mark Bairstow's not noted for his kicking for goal. This year he's kicked 24 goals, but 32 points. I suppose because of the fact that he plays up the ground as a ruck rover and he's getting a lot of those kicks on the run, he more or less blazes away at goal. But this is a deliberate shot for goal and a very good goal. A quiet player today, let's hope he gets into the game because they do need him to lift. We're back in the middle. Geelong keep coming back. The next goal, Vital Lindner, who's played a wonderful game. In trouble. Pritchard's got the ball, grabbed immediately by Stone, and there's the time remaining, and we've got to bounce alongside this inner circle. And Lindner's a loose man coming off the back line for Geelong. Ayres is a loose man for Hawthorne in their back line. Dia wins it down, taken by Tuck. He's slung. They battle after the ball. Bairstow over the top of it. And yet another baller. So it's back to 24 points now. It was 40 at quarter time, 37 at half time. And the Cats are clawing their way. Inch by inch. Back at the Hawks. Flanagan wins it down decisively. Malakellis, the kick towards half forward. It was touched. Off hands, it spills wide. Brilliant pick up by Hamilton. The count. He'll go close from 45 metres. It's long. It's loose away to the right. And the mark is taken down there by Brownless. Soaring over the top of the pack. What spectacular stuff that was. Ablett went up for the first one, and he thought it was all over, then all of a sudden, late on the scene, Brownless. Bill Brownless, alongside the behind post, in the left full forward pocket, runs around, kicks, and misses. Minor score, just over 16 minutes remaining. Third quarter, Geelong 9-5, Trail Hawthorne 12-10. And Flanagan doing well in the ruck. He's instigating a lot of play for Geelong, beating gear at the stage. Interesting piece of history as Ayers goes in short and finds Langford. Hawthorne have never beaten Geelong in a final round match. The ball on the outer side wing. Whitman leads back in the race. Awkward bounce. Bairstow wasn't watching the ball. Grabbed by Buse. Scrambles a kick back towards half forward. Gary Hawking's got it in the grasp. Goes to ground. Surely that was holding the ball. No free. Buse over the ball now. Grabbed by Whitman. Gets the hand pass away. Hawking's got it on the outer side wing. Releases Couch. Couch running towards half forward. Kicks down towards the pocket. Off hands. Crashing in there was Stoneham. He controls it well at half forward. Stoneham the centering kick. It's intended for Malakellis. He's taken the mark. Down went Dippy Domenico off the ball. Malakellis short to Scott. Great play by Geelong. And I think the crowd can sense something here. See, you're not a safe man when you know we're near the ball. They're taking your eye off the ball and the opportunity presents itself. They'll clean you up there. Players on both sides. Tremendous character being shown by Geelong. They trailed 8-4 to two goals. At quarter time, that's 40 points. And now a chance to get within three goals of Hawthorne and Scott misses. A bad miss by Robert Scott. It's his second kick for the game. He's got to lift Robert Scott. 22 points the margin. It could easily have been 17. Mew has the ball. 
No one really to kick it to. Yes, there is. Langford on his own at centre-half back. Unbelievable stuff by the Geelong forwards. Langford. That's a good man too, uh, Ian. Now he kicks the ball towards centre-half forward. A high drop punt kick. The ball goes through the back. Hockey gets the hand pass out to Buse. Buse backs himself. I don't know why, neither does Don Scott. Kick off the ground by Pritchard or from mid-air. Goes up towards Dunstall in the forward pocket. But he can't reach it. And Don, what have you got to say about oh, Andrew Buse? I don't know. You'd be tearing your hair out, wouldn't you? He's not doing the instinctive thing. He thinks he can run around. You can't do it in a final. Just get it on your boot and put it down the ground to the advantage of your teammates. And still in the third term, he continues to do so. The Hawks lead by 22 points. Runs has been quiet. Scrambles a kick forward. Buckenara just inside 50. Goes long down towards full forward. He's astray and through for a minor score. Just over 13 and a half minutes remaining in this third quarter. Alan Jeans looks on his eighth season at Hawthorne. Tim Darcy to kick in. One senses something's brewing at the MCG. There's the time remaining. Short to Hamilton from Darcy. Hamilton with time and space. Bounces once. Kicks towards centre wing. Hocking from behind. A hand on the back of Kennedy. Not seen. Hocking was held without it. No free kick. Gathered by Morrissey. Craig and popped one from Vicky and Domenico. Oh, will be reported, I think. Certainly. It's reported. Well, it's been coming because Dippy and Domenico has gone at one or two. He went at that time at hockey and he got caught. And hockey not too good. Harry Hawking setting this one out at the moment. Right. Maybe Hawthorne just starting to square the ledger because Platten went off. Brereton was hurt earlier in the game. Not the best time to square the ledger, as you can see. He found his mark. But Dennis, if you're going to do it, do it on centre wing because you're really not giving any advantage to the team. Well, the ledger that counts is squared away at 5 o'clock. That's when they rule up the bottom line, and Geelong aren't spent yet. That hurt. Hocking towards half forward, kicks it straight out of bounds. So he's shaken up a little bit. And the kick will be taken by Condon. No, it goes back to Deer. Deer forward of left half back. Tough, spiteful at times, game of football. Deer long towards half forward from behind Brereton. Strong mark. Too far out to score. Dunstall goes on the lead to the pocket. That's the direction the kick takes. Hawthorne player down off the ball. Missed down there in the pocket. Anderson scrambles towards goal. What a massive goal. And that was a magnificent goal. But then, what about behind play? Jamie Morrissey, not too good. He's got his hands down on his knees. And this is, as Dennis called earlier, a spiteful game. Because you're not safe in here or off the ball because you'll still get collected but this is a good play here by Brereton Anderson running onto it fortunate one step bank for goal Hawthorne's 13 29 points the Hawks lead Bearstow a crude tackle advantage rule paid the play goes on it finishes with Condon Condon short pass into the pocket two Hawthorne players racing for the ball Curran and Dunstall but the bounce does not favour either one. So we'll have a boundary throw-in in the right forward pocket for Hawthorne. Very important. Ten minutes now, or 12 minutes for Geelong. They must try and bridge that gap before three-quarter time. Up over the top, Morrissey. Burrett kicks across his body. Now a chance for Curran. Curran's kick. Oh, magnificent stuff. Well, it all seems to be going Hawthorne's way. The ball bounced off a couple of hands before it finished up in Curran's. And he really didn't have a deliberate shot for goal. He put the ball on high, hoping. There was Morrissey over the back. A good smother there by Geelong. And a high ball from Curran. And things going Hawthorne's way. Great kick by Curran. That's his third goal. And the Hawks go marching on. Back in the middle then, Buckenara an opportunity, gets the hand pass away, Pritchard. You get the feeling they've ridden out another storm. Pritchard, a second bounce, just outside 50, goes long towards full forward. He's off target this time. And through it goes for a minor score. Well, just before half-time, Geelong were creeping back in at about the 20-minute mark. Hawthorne suddenly, a barrage of goals. 
And again, Geelong just gaining momentum. And suddenly, they've been stopped in their tracks by Hawthorne. A couple of wonderful goals. Anderson and Curran. Darcy goes to the other side ever so slightly. Through the hands of Anderson. Winners away. Out wide to Bairstow. Bairstow through the centre square. Pinpoint accuracy. Hits Brownless on the chest. Brownless will kick from about 55 metres out. And distance, I'd say, won't be a problem. He can kick it a long way. And this one's no exception. That's a magnificent goal. Usually forwards are dangerous inside 50 metres. But when you've got Gary Ablett and Bill Brownless outside 50 metres, they are dangerous. Now, what a magnificent kick. I didn't think he quite got onto it. He slipped on impact. But it's still a magnificent kick for goal by the full forward. Two goals to Bill Brownless up on that Geelong forward line. Five goals to Gary Ablett. 30, 30 points, Hawthorne's lead. And we've got ten and a half minutes left in this third quarter. But it just appears as though they play catch-up football. The ball at uh, centre-half back. Now Yates can't break away. Bruns tries to tap it to the advantage of his side. Couch can't get clear. Bacanara the tackler. The ball runs free. Collins gathers well. Kicks it wide towards the wing. Views drops what he should have taken. Chance now for Flanagan and he busses his way out. But Ayres is there to tidy up for Hawthorne. Ayres kick high in towards the forward pocket and Dunstall takes the mark as Darcy... That will be 50, should be 50 metres. Well, you've picked it, Don. That'll put the Geelong defender right on the goal line. And another crucial error. That was bad luck for Flanagan on the other side wing. He hand passed to a name, didn't he? He was called. But, but then again, it was also a bad mistake by Andrew Hughes yeah. again out on that edge of the square. The Dunstall who has kicked two, surely will kick his third, and he does so. As soon as Geelong mount a challenge, it's always answered by Hawthorne, and Hawthorne are retaining their composure, airs drifting well up from the back line, sent the high ball, and it had to be a 50-metre penalty against Darcy. If anything, Flanagan should have gone straight down the ground with that hand pass. Dunstall, not a problem. His third goal, kicked six goals last time he played. That was against Essendon. In actual fact, today he's kicked three goals, three. And that's his yearly total to 137. Of course, seven goals in last year's grand final, a winning effort against Melbourne. Ten minutes remaining in the third quarter. And Hawthorne out to a handy lead yet again. 102 to 66. Rucks go at it. Flanagan wins it down and again. Kennedy put down by Hamilton. Malakellis has got the run of it. Sweeping hand pass to accommodate this man Cameron. He runs to 45. He goes long. It's home. Well, last year, David Cameron was one of those sneaky forward pockets. And uh, this year, he's found it a little bit hard getting into this side. This is his eighth game for the season. And he played mainly as that forward pocket. But this year, he's been used as a wingman as he was last week. Started half back today. And now he looks as if he's on the half forward flank. That's as his first goal. So 30 points now. Hawthorne lead by. Still a scramble for possession in that centre circle area. Boss throwing himself on the football as Mark Boss. Dippy Domenico appealing for a free kick. Umpire will bounce once again. Hawthorne are far quicker into that centre bounce down from the outside of the square than what Geelong are. Geelong are uh, trotting in, Hawthorne are sprinting in. Yes, the numbers are there when the umpire bounces the ball. A big thump by Deer. Oh, the bounce certainly favours Bacanara. It comes out the back to Bairstow. Bairstow's kick across his body. Dippy Domenico too tall for Bruns. And he takes the mark. He plays on quickly. Kicks it in towards Dunstall. At the back, it's a punch away. Morrissey somehow finds some space, gets his foot to the ball, and goals. Like the parting of the Red Sea. And what unfortunate luck there, because the Geelong players did the right thing. You can see Tim Darcy in all sorts of trouble. And it was Mark Yates backing back. They were doing the right thing, Geelong. It takes a lot of courage to do what Yates did, but luck just did not go that way because... 
Morrissey was the one sweeping onto the ball. Look at Yates backing into the pack. The pack fly, he's caught underneath. And the reason why it opened up is the fact that Geelong had two defenders down on the ground. Back in the middle, Flanagan. Ball loose in that centre square. Scott's got the run of it. Great use of the body by Collins. He should get a free kick. He was held without it. The poise. The poor form showing now. Collins. Just carries centre with the kick. And the mark is taken by Vicky Domenico. Court of left centre wing. Runs has had a very quiet day. Just five kicks. No hand passes. He didn't make a hand pass last weekend. Vicky Domenico has shed his boot. Still gets it across to Mew. Mew under no pressure. Wobbles it down to about 30 metres out from goal. And Current has taken the mark down there. It was a good mark, Dennis. That, that ball was swinging in the breeze. And it was a terrific mark. I Curran. don't think that Mark Yates is too good. They're going to make a change here, Geelong. Stoneham's going down to the back line. Actually, it's Darcy. Darcy's going to come off. And Stoneham to full back. Yes, it's coming off too. And he's also going off for Hawthorne. Manigan on. And Schultz will come on for Geelong. Here's Curran kicking at his fourth goal. It's a wayward kick. This is by a margin. There's not enough steps there by Peter Curran. I'm sure if he had a good look at the replay of that, he'd be very critical of himself. As Schultz comes onto the ground, Gary Ayres there on the interchange bench for Hawthorne. The kick in goes to the outer side. The good mark taken by Lindner. Gets the hand pass off the couch. Couch coming into the play a little bit. The left foot kick by Couch towards half forward. Applet can't mark. It's two on one. Mew gets back quickly. Applet attempts the tackle, but Mew's kick across his body back towards centre half forward. Great interception by Curran. He can't break away. Malakalis's handball is smothered. Mews flips it back, but it's Kennedy who swims on the loose ball. Bacchanari to an open goal. Is this another Hawthorne goal? Yes, sir. Lee. Three goals to Gary Bacchanara, and away go the Hawks. Well, I may be a little bit hard on Hughes. He flipped it over again. In finals, you've got to grab it with two hands. Watch this. Just couldn't quite control it. And there it is, Ken Kennedy running down. Bacchanara, they just do it so well, Hawthorne. I've got to say in his defence, that was a pretty hot hand pass. It came out quickly. We hit it to back-to-back -back premierships for Hawthorne. 17, 13, 11, 6. It's beginning to look that way. Back in the middle, Couch has other ideas. Left the ball behind, though. Off the ground by Pritchard towards half forward. Curran's got the run of it. He's been a very valuable forward. Gets it across to Bacchanara. 52 metres out. He pulls it down towards the pocket. Brilliantly controlled on the half volley by Dunstall, who pulls it back. But Hawking's in front to take the mark. Stephen Hawking to Boss. Deep in defence. Fine Schultz on the other side. He runs to left half back and kicks towards centre wing. In front coming up the ground is Stoner. Couldn't hang on. He's going to get a free kick. Pushed in the back. Stoner on the other side wing. Once more, Geelong have fallen off the pace. Stoner towards half forward. Outlet comes over the top. Couldn't hang on. And this is young Madigan coming away from half back. A surprise selection this week towards half forward. Boss bumps it forward. Lidner, probably Geelong's best player, in traffic. Hand pass comes to Buse. Buse gets around Lidner. Unloads into the forward line yet again. Kennedy in front. Applin over the top. Oh, what a mark. He is an amazing player, Gary Ablett. What an amazing mark. And there's Gary is Now, he's not too good if he's going up into the change rooms. John Platten is already there. So Hawthorne might be a case of the wa walking wounded. And here's Ablett, number five. A number made famous by Polly Farmer at Geelong. He's worn by distinction by this man. A record riding on this kick. Ablett shooting at his sixth. Most goals in a final series. He puts it through. Yes, I suppose he and Darren Flanagan are the only shining lights for the Geelong side. He certainly has performed well. Not only the fact that he has kicked goals, as Dennis mentioned, that's his sixth and a record. And I think, by memory, he breaks a record set by Kevin Bart. In 1980, Don, Kevin Bartlett held the record, which was 20, 21 goals. Or was it Ron Todd? 
Might have to go back through the history books, but it could have been wrong tight. Well, the ball's bounced back in the centre. Flanagan comes away and kicks it directly towards goal. Can the Geelong mark be taken up here? Ablett gathers the ball at ground level. Good interception by Collins. Great play by the Hawthorne back pocket player. And his short kick is effective. He finds Bacanara about 30 metres further afield. Gary Bacanara, nine kicks and six hand passes. This kick is effective. He finds Deer just a little closer to the Hawthorne goal. Greg Deer goes to play on. The kick is wide. Yates over the top. Punches the ball away from Curran. At the back. Gathered by Boss. Up against the boundary line. He's pushed over by Brereton. And we'll have a boundary throw in at half forward for Hawthorne. Michael Roberts on the boundary line has a report on Gary Ayres. Gary Ayres was taken straight up. He hobbled off stiff legged. He's done his right thigh. And Tim Darcy has his knee in his, his right knee in ice. Thanks, Michael. So it's an all-star medical room as far as the Hawks are concerned. Some big great players injured today. We've got Clatton and Ayres in the room. Brereton on the ground. He's pretty shaky out there too. Put down in the first 15 seconds by Mark Yates. Picked him off as he went to the centre square. Boundary throw in. Forward of centre wing for the Cats. And a free kick in front to Flanagan. Who's tried very hard for doing, them this afternoon. Actually doing very, very well since coming on at quarter time. Kicks for open space. Tuck goes back with courage and takes the mark. Michael Tuck. Fourth season as captain. Swings it out wide. Mark is taken on the outer side by Langford. Closing him down his ablet belatedly. 17-13 to 12-6. Just over three minutes remaining. Third quarter. Kick towards half forward. Over the top. Couch fists away. Opportunity forward for Cameron. He falls over. Madigan did well. Got it across to Condon. To Anderson. Anderson 35 metres out and closing. Is he accurate? Yes, he is. Well, that's Anderson's third goal. And was set up by the youngster who came on, replacing the injured Gary Ayres. He actually made a lead initially, Madigan. It was ignored. And then in the pack, he went back, got the quick handball. And here it is, following up, quick handball out. Condon chipping it across to Anderson. No pressure as Anderson goes in for his third. Just under three minutes left in the third quarter. And the Hawks holding a very, very handy lead. Bruns gets the football on centre wing. He punts Geelong into attack. Up towards half forward, Stone and Car Park. Mew first to recover. A kick across his body and chipping in his bruns to take the mark between the wing and half forward. His hand pass goes off to Boss. Boss's left foot kick to full forward. Groundless Car Park. Applet takes possession, kicks the ball across his body. Is it another goal? It's very close. No, just to the offside of the goalpost and through for a behind. Gary Applet's first, first behind. He's got it. His copy book. Yes. Well, six goals won. I think we'll excuse him. His performance hasn't been all that bad. John Kennedy, a short kick in from full back. The sun shining brightly. Condon had to guard his eye to take that mark. Good tackle by Hamilton. And Condon's kick finds the safety of the boundary line, fortunately for the Hawks, on the 50-metre line. How about Gary Ablett? 34-24 in his last six matches, right? Terrific stuff by Gary Ablett. And he's playing a one man band up there on the Geelong forward line. The boundary throw in now. Madigan streams through. Great play by the youngster. He backs himself and kicks Hawthorne into attack. Up towards half forward. Brereton can't mark. Closely contested by Yates. But Brereton somehow gets out the back door. Kicks it up into the forward pocket. The bounce goes through all players. Stephen Hocking first to recover. And he kicks it wide to the boundary line on the members side. The bouncing ball a little too close to the line for Neville Bruns. And we'll have a boundary throw in. Just outside 50 metres for Hawthorne. And one gets the feeling that the Hawks are coasting. Back-to-back -back premierships at stake here for Hawthorne. There's the scoreboard. 121 plays 79 in the dying seconds of the third quarter. Anderson paddles the ball to himself. Hockey goes back. Good tackle by Dunstall. Somehow the ball comes out to Linda. The short pass. No mark to Bruns, but he plays on quickly at half-back. Neville Bruns kicks it across the centre. Flanagan goes after it and gathers the ball pretty well for a big fellow. The left foot kick, he was off balance, up towards Brownless. He overruns the football. Ablett swooping on it. Langford holds that man. There's a free kick, free kick. Free kick no, right. throw it in, says the central umpire. And Gary Ablett, he perhaps thought it was OK because he doesn't look too disappointed. Half a minute left in the third quarter. And the Hawks with a very, very handy lead. Flanagan doing the ruck work. 
Dia gets the tap out. The ball goes into that forward pocket. Mew will hurry it over the line in front of Stoneham, so we'll have another boundary throw in. Chris Mew, the Hawthorne centre halfback. Langford at fullback. Ayres off the ground. Three very important players in the Hawthorne defence. Flanagan doing the ruck work. Deer. The ball comes down to Hamilton. Hamilton's left foot kick. It may even bounce through for a goal. It certainly is a goal. Right on the siren. Hamilton kicks Geelong's 13th goal. And at three quarter time, Hawthorne lead 18 13, 121. Geelong 13 7, 85. Set for the final term of the grand final. Hawthorne 18 13, Geelong 13 7. Everything to play for. Back to back pennants beckon for the Hawks as Deer gets it down. Buccanara kicks towards half forward. Fisted away down there by Hawking. Leading in the race his brother. That was Steve down to Gary. Gary's over the ball, shovels it out. We've got a whistle and the ball up. What Geelong are doing are running David Cameron off the back end of the square, leaving Greg Madigan by himself in the Hawthorne forward lock back line. Here's the bounce then. Biesto, was he taken high? No free kick. Malakellis has got the run of it. Buccanara stood his ground brilliantly. Feeds Anderson, who goes down towards the pocket. Dunstall on the lead. Too quick for Schultz. So Dunstall will kick at goal from about 40 metres out. Three so far this afternoon. Not an easy kick. If he gets this, the grand final should be all over. He's missed. He slides it across the face. Curran the leaper. Couldn't hang on. The ball spills out of bounds and will be thrown in. Tuck's got a problem. They're calling for Tate. Perhaps a dislocation. Boundary throw in. Curran, who's done well in that area, flicks it behind the pack. Whitman towards full forward. Dunstall couldn't hang on. This is Buse. He runs it out. Buse comes up towards half back. Sweeping hand pass. Linder in trouble. Gives it away. Taken by Kennedy. Fast rebound opportunity. Anderson. He runs to 40. He measures the kick and he misses to the right hand side. Well, the ball was pretty hot then when Linder had it. He really didn't look around and it was bad hand pass. And there's. Ayers and also Platten on the bench there, the injured. Kick in by Yates finds Gary Hocking. Gary Hocking, who's been pretty quiet, left foot kick wide, looking out here for Flanagan, and he takes the mark at half back for the Cats. Geelong need to get a bit of a roll on. Flanagan's kick on centre wing and a good mark taken by Stoneham in front of Mew. Barry Stoneham, centre wing, member side. The drop punt kick up towards half forward. Who's home here for Geelong? Lindner flies from the back, can't take the mark. Couch knocks it on, but there's a free kick being kicked out of it, and it looks like it's going to the Brownlow medalist, Paul Couch. Outside 50 metres. A little too far out to score, I would suggest, but if he can kick it up into the goal square, Ablett at the back, asking for the ball to be de delivered high. It's there, Ablett can't mark. Langford can, a solid performance by the Hawthorne defender. So great positioning then by Langford. Great positioning. Langford now. Kicks after only two steps. It slews off the side of his boot and Bairstow marks at centre-half forward for Geelong. Move the ball quickly, Cats. No time to waste. Nothing left for the losers. The kick in towards the goal square. It's punched away by the Hawthorne defender. Langford and through for a rush behind to Geelong. And Schull's going off. Or is it? No, it's Mark Yates. Yates who's in a little bit of trouble in the third quarter. He's off now. Darcy's come back on there. He was injured and he's picking up Brereton. He's also injured. Here's Langford. Members side with a kick. Madigan over the top. Juggled attempt at the mark, not play. Quick hand pass comes across from Malakellis to Buse, who goes goalward and misses to the near side. And Geelong have outscored Hawthorne in the last two quarters, only marginally that contest we were talking about in the first quarter of course the Hawks set it up 8-4 to 2 goals so the margin then was 40 points running repairs Michael Tuck half time 37 points three quarter time 36 and we've got closer still but just with minor scores the kick in wide of the congestion Madigan awkward bounce played it superbly Got it down to Collins, who scrambles it towards centre wing. Morrissey's over the ball. Well played. Great finesse. Morrissey breaks away. Boots it down towards half forward. Brereton 
as Aiken Bones couldn't quite get there. Darcy will be aching some more. Great tackle by Dippy Domenico. Brereton tries to give it back to him. And Darcy, with assistance there, runs the ball across the boundary line. Jordan, you're gonna, play then, wasn't it? they're going to look at this replay and learn that the pressure just goes up a little bit in grand finals, doesn't it? It's an understatement, Ian. Boundary throw in, half forward flank for Hawthorne. Brereton takes it out of the air. Steve Hockey, Malakellis. Left foot kick by Malakellis is OK. On the end of it is Flanagan. He's wide of centre. If he could kick it further wide, he kicks it towards centre half forward. Brunts is at the back, looking for the bouncing ball. Ablett. Outside 50 metres, flips it to Scott. Here's Bruns in the picture now. Into an open goal goes Bruns. And as he put it through, yes, it's all clear. Well, Neville Bruns running into his first goal. He's a good player last week. But then again, had he have missed that, he would have ruled the day because Bill Brownless was by himself in the goal square. He'd drawn, drawn McGuinness, Bruns. Neville just can't control it quickly. Good play by Scott, and here's Bruns running in the open goal. goal. He drew McGuinness, could have flipped it over, but nonetheless he kicked his first. So the margin is back to 29 points. They will not lie down as Flanagan, who's done superbly, got it down. Hughes couldn't control it. Morrissey got the kick away. It wasn't written. It was written. Morrissey gets the hand pass to Pritchard. He goes in short. This is Bacchanara, and Bacchanara gets the quick reply. Four goals, Gary Bacchanara. And that's confidence, the way they played that. What a cheeky little chip pass it was from Darren Pritchard. It barely covered 10 metres. And Bacchanara had his back to goal. But that's the way Hawthorne play there. Ex well, they're just supremely confident. Watch this, a good hand pass. And the way that Pritchard got it across to Bacchanara. Confident football. And Gary Bacchanara is so dependable when it comes to scoring goals. The bounce back in the centre. Flanagan, Malakellis gets the ball out. Scott running up towards centre half forward. Robert Scott goes bang with a drop punt kick. It's wide. Oh, and a great mark taken by McGuinness. Crashing into the behind post. And let's hope he's OK. Mm. Scott McGuinness. <laughs> a lot of doubt over whether he'd take his place in the side. He's picked himself up. Oh, a feel for him. And here it is again. And he's been mark. propped up by the boundary fence at the moment. You can see there, the doctor. Tough young man by the look of it, Don. Running out of players, aren't they? He recovers to take his kick. Half-back flank. And a great mark taken by views just inside 50 metres. So you mentioned Dennis at uh, Geelong. They just won't lie down. They are certainly making a game of it, but they are playing catch-up football. Views from the 50-metre line. The drop punt kick drops into the square. Marking contest. Ablett can't take it. Hamilton will kick a goal. No, it slews off the side of his boot and through for a behind. Just a little off balance there, Shane Hamilton. And he kicks Geelong's 10th behind. They've got to take those half chances. Just over 19 minutes remaining. Langford, in the bright sunshine, comes Mender's side. At the top, Collins. This is Bairstow waiting behind a quiet day. Pulls it back across his body. Malakellis camped underneath it. Goes back with great courage. Within scoring range. That's a good mark, Dennis, isn't it? Yep. There he guts it. See some tremendous displays of courage today, and that was... You know, that equals anything that's been shown today. That was terrific. Question of accuracy here. The kick from about 35 metres out. It's bending too much. Minus score. And the Cats creep closer. 33 points, the margin. And the time ticks away. Hawthorne, one of the great sides of all time. So spare a thought for the Cats today. They tried very, very hard. They stood them up as start. Since then, it's been very even. Bruns on the outer side, takes the mark. There's the time remaining. Bruns, only nine possessions so far. Centering kick, Flanagan marks. Getting plenty of target practice at the moment, the Cats. There's a long way out. We could kick this, Flanagan. He has a good kick. He's been one of their better players today. He kicks from 52 metres. Oh, it's going long.
That's a goal. You know, I wish I could pick winners at the races like that. Well, Darren Flanagan's had the better of uh, Greg Deer. Now, Greg Deer had the better of Simon Madden because of his mobility last time he played. But in football, you're really only as good as your last game. And in a final, an ordinary player can really lift himself. And Flanagan has done that since coming off interchange. Ben's shown great mobility around the ground. But more importantly, he's getting hit outs in the centre. Geelong get the ball out of the centre again. It's up towards half forward. And a great mark, nearly taken by Madigan. Pushed off the ball, Kennedy. Stoneham gets it out to Malakalis. The short chip is effective. And the mark is taken by Gary Adler. And it was Stoneham there. He's the workhorse at centre half forward. He's had a very quiet day, Stoneham, by his standards that he set this year. He's been an outstanding centre half forward, but it was him who got the ball out initially, and it's finished with Gary Adler. Curran's limping at the other end of the ground. And Geelong look reasonably well, apart from Darcy. Question mark on him. Applett goes for goal number seven, and he pins it. Gary Ablett is one of those players. He's not overconfident, but to speak to Gary, I remember him as a youngster, a teenager, when he first came to Hawthorne. He wasn't blasé, but he was very, very confident fellow, and he's got a lot of confidence in his ability. There's not overconfidence, but the way and the way he handles himself on the football field, and he knows what he is capable of doing, and he just does it so well. A disturbance in the crowd. Back to 21 points now. Dia slaps it down towards half forward. Hughes does nicely. Hawthorne have players down with Grant. Now Condon is down. Meantime, the ball in the forward line. What a magnificent mark by Langford. He had the judgment. It's all happening. That's half a streaker. There's Anderson. Out towards centre wing. The Hawks looking a little bit tired now. Over the top it comes. Pritchard. Have they got the poise to subdue one more challenge? At half forward, fisted away by Darcy. Boss has got it. Scrambles it high. Couch will come. Fisted away by Condon there. Hughes did well. Couch confronted and runs away. No Good great tackle. tackle. Whitman ran him down. Curran's got it. Kicks to about 20 metres out. Dunstall. Great use of the body. Has taken this mark. And maybe now they can quell this uprising. Gee, they've made some mistakes, Geelong. Couch on that occasion, then. Yes, they're running into wrong positions, oh, aren't they, Don? They're just trying to do too much. I think it's a home and away game. Dunstall has kicked three. Make that four. Well, a lot of Hawthorne's goals have come through Geelong mistakes, and that one came through a Geelong mistake. Why they try and run around and get themselves out of trouble on a half-back line in a pressure game. You can only do the instinctive thing, but Geelong are not doing it. Perhaps their instinct is all wrong. But a great goal by Dunstall. Yes, they've just had too many uh, options up forward. Hawthorne, Curran has kicked. Uh, Peter Curran has kicked three. Barrett has kicked three. Dunstall, four. Bacanara, four. And Anderson, three. And they've really shared it around the Hawks. Of course, Jason Dunstall, the leading goal scorer in the competition this year. Couch takes it out, gets the hand pass to Bairstow. Here come the Cats again, up towards half forward. Nearly the gather by Ablett. The ball out the back to Collins. He tries to flip it out, and he gets it to Madigan. Madigan, fumbling was Mew, Scott. Opportunity for Whitman. Here's Ablett, swooping on the football. Well tackled by the brother-in-law, Tuck. The kick goes into the pocket. Hamilton, close to the boundary line. Can he keep it in? He's one out. He flips it out the back. Close to the line again. Dippy Domenico gets the hand pass back. Collins clears for Hawthorne. Back in towards the centre. The mark is taken by Flanagan. Geelong still got their foot on the pedal. They're motoring home. Flanagan's kicked the half forward. The mark is taken by Stoneham. And he's right on the 50 metre line. Can he kick the distance? Well, at this stage of the game, I've got my doubts. Early in the game, I think he'd make the distance. He's You're not much tired. of a gambler, are you, no, Don? Not at this stage, Ian. Well, I'll have a go. I'll say you'll kick it. Barry Stoneham, a tremendous player. Been a little quiet. Centre half forward for the state side earlier in the season. Stoneham gets under it a little bit. The drop punt kick. Gets the distance and the accuracy. 
Antonio Robbo. Well, there's been some magnificent kicking today for goal. And it's come from a long way out. It's a little bit like basketball. They can't get them around the goal, so they're going for three pointers. And Geelong was, was uh, Flanagan earlier, Ablett, and now a long bomb here and a beautiful kick by Barry Stone. There's still a chance, Dennis, do you think? Yep, I think they are. An outstanding grand final. We're back to 21 points again as the Cats simply keep on coming. Flanagan, new, the hurry kick, plenty of time remaining. Burton's in front, Darcy over the top. Boss has got it now. Puts it back towards centre wing. Deer is tired. Pissed away. Dippia Domenico on the outer side. Out of the traffic. Hooks it towards centre half forward. Hawthorne have got the numbers. Boss flew over the top. Morrissey breaks away. Morrissey runs to 35. Left foot towards goal. And he's missed. Actually, he was pushed onto that by that bump by Bairstow. Morrissey. Maybe Bairstow should have retained him by a tackle. 113. Beautiful day, ideal conditions. Ball on the outer side. Winners over it. Shuttles it out. Buccanara goes to ground looking for a free kick off the ground there by Darcy. The whistle's gone. Buccanara's free. Bit lucky. His contribution has been valuable. Four goals. Wonderful play. Down towards the pocket he goes. Oh. Dippia Domenico. Could have got 50 perhaps had he been collected. He plays on. Kicks towards goal. Kicks are behind. Don't know what Linda was thinking about then. Stupid play, Dennis. Yeah. Hawk supporters looking a bit anxious there, Dennis. Yes, emotions running high. Schulz kicks in. Members side. Cameron in front. Takes the mark. Good mark that one. Yes, Cameron at half back. And they must move it quickly. They just can't slow down. Cameron called the play on by the umpire. Kick up towards half forward. Stoneham's bumped off it by Mew. And Mew kicks the Hawks back towards centre half forward. It's a Hawthorne mark. No, play on. Curran has the football. Can't really do much with it. Morrissey can't do much with it. David Cameron again. Kicks the ball wide. There are two Geelong players out there. They've got 10 metres between them. Now Mews gathers it between half back and centre wing. The kick towards Hamilton. Hamilton gathers the ball well. Kicks it around the corner towards half forward. Ablett and Langford. Malakalis. Umpire calls play on. Malakalis on the boundary line. Runs over the line. Did he keep the ball in? Yes. The kick back towards half forward. Punched away by Langford. Tapped on by Deer. Pritchard dispossessed unfairly by Flanagan. And Pritchard will take the free kick at half back for Hawthorne. I know that was accidental. Nonetheless, the umpire deemed it too high. Darren Pritchard, 21st possession, kicks the ball high towards centre wing. A big punch from behind by Lindner. The ball goes back towards half forward. The bouncing ball a little awkward for Tuck. And he puts his body in a great position and he's rewarded with a free kick. So Michael Tuck, will he be the man to hold the Premiership Cup aloft at approximately 10 minutes past five? Michael Tuck's kick towards half forward. No mark taken. Good punch away. Condon. Well tackled by Bruns. Buccanara's there again. He's tackled by Darcy. The ball comes free. Curran gets it back to Burton. Burton's hand pass arrogantly to Deer. Condon should have been tackled by Cameron. Condon rides the bump. The ball comes to Gary Hockey. He gets the hand pass wide. Opportunity for Flanagan. Hand pass to Couch. Couch on the left foot. Kicks it. The Cats up towards centre half forward. It's one on two. Stoneham can't mark. John Kennedy takes the ball away. It's action of plenty. Buccanara's kicked towards half forward. Deer can't do much. The free kick is down the ground because Buccanara had been interfered with after he kicked the ball and Hawthorne go on with it. Up towards full forward. Punch away by Schultz is over the line and we'll have a boundary throw in about 30 metres around from the Hawthorne goal. We've got ten and a half minutes left in this grand final. Throw in. Curran behind the pack, taken by Boss. He's claimed. Down goes Curran. Tries to kick it forward. Cross it comes to Bairstow from hockey. He's still running with the ball. Well played. Spills come across to Lindner. Lindner breaks away from half back. The second bounce carries into centre wing. Well shepherded. Goes long down towards the pocket. Atwood is there. Almost the one-hander. Finds it on the ground. From 25 metres out, he's kicked it. His eighth goal. Oh, Gary Ablett. 
He's just quite amazing. If you want to see a footballer in action, come and watch Gary Ablett. He measured that guy, he lined it up, and he was just so casual, but he just got so much confidence in his ability. Here's Linda breaking off half-back. And credit to Geelong, they just won't lie down. Gary Ablett, he's kicked eight goals. And that was on the left foot, a great goal. 17 points the difference. Just a tick over 10 minutes remaining. The attendance today, 94,796 as Flanagan wins it down. Dia boots his side towards half forward. Stephen Hawking goes off the ground. Geelong appear to have the run. Couch was tackled. Gary Hawking flicks it out wide. Boss has got the run. He spawns across centre wing. He fires it to half forward. The miracle worker is down there. Adler carried under the ball. Hamilton behind. 40 metres out. Open goal. It's home. Another one. Well, what an amazing effort. We said through the commentary they won't lie down. This is the best grand final I've seen for a number of years. Can they maintain the momentum? They've just not or can't make the mistakes that they were making earlier. And Hamilton, who came off into change, his second goal. And now Geelong seem to have got the run on. And Hawthorne, can they hang on? They've got a lot of injured players. They've got nobody to place them on interchange with. Oh, what a finish, Don. And tremendous character shown by the Cats. They trail by 11 points. Can they get the ball out of the centre? Flanagan. They've smothered it in there again. Bacanara. The ball's still there for grabs. Couch can't break away, and the umpire will call for another bounce. Let's hope the umpires aid the game by not becoming technical with their decisions. Nine minutes left. Two goals the difference. Linder on his own on that outer wing. Can they gather the ball? Malakalis. Brun. Smothered. Kick off the ground by Dippy Domenico. The Hawks have the numbers on this member's wing. Bacanara. Over the top, Anderson. Into an open goal goes Anderson. And it's there. Hawthorne by 17 points. Well, it was an open forward line. The only fellow down there was Dunstall. He was in the square with his opponent. So Hawthorne could flip it over as they did there. And Dunst and uh, Anderson, who's been a real headache up there, has gone and he kicked his fourth goal. But he had really no opposition. Well, all the skill in the world sometimes stands for naught. Just hacked out at mid-air by a Hawthorne player and it favoured two others. And maybe a dream ended on that mid-air fly. Flanagan regrouping, trying to marshal his efforts for one more charge. 21-16 to 19-11. Bacchanara with the time showing. Pond on the quick kick, only as far as Hughes. We've got to go long, long. That's the story. Hughes alongside the centre circle. Deep. Ablett with the run. Up he goes. Couldn't hang on. Hamilton again the opportunist. Hamilton from 45 metres. Pulls it back. They'll contest it up five metres out. Off hands an opportunity for McGuinness. He runs it out. He comes member's side with the kick. A good one too. Into the path of this man Whitman. He's got some time and space. He boots towards half forward. But bounces just inside the field of play. And runs away from Morrissey for a throw in. Good kick by Whitman there. What a great game that we've witnessed. 21 goals, 16 to 19 goals, 11. And all players looking a little weary. Perfect conditions at the MCG for the grand final. And the players really looking as though they've played a game of football this afternoon. Berwick thumps the ball over the boundary line. We'll have another boundary throw in. Manigan and Buckingham are loose for Hawthorne. They haven't got opponents. They'll have to man up. On centre wing with just seven minutes left. Hawks lead by 17 points. Brereton takes it out of the boundary throw in. The bounce favours Dippy Domenico. He crashes his way through. He goes for goal with the left foot and it bounces through for another behind. So that means the difference now is exactly 18 points. Three straight kicks for Geelong and they could tie it all up. But have we got enough time left? It's under seven minutes now. The kick goes straight up the ground. Flanagan can't mark. It's punched away. The rebound comes back towards Darcy. Gary Hocking fumbles badly. Tuck the sense. Hand pass goes to Badigan. Short kick marked by Stephen Hocking. Rebound football. Hamilton goes to Bairstow. The Cats are in open space on the outer wing. Bairstow up towards 50 metres. A little chip kick. And it finds Scott well within scoring distance. But he can't blame Collins on that occasion. He was in two minds. Geelong were drawing him. 
And at least the fellows up the ground have presence to find Scott. Good play, Geelong. Scott, 35 metres, runs right up to the man on the mark, hooks the kick across the face of goal, and it just scrapes in for a behind. So now Hawthorne by 17 points with six minutes left. What a classical grand final. The up and comers challenging the champs. And it's going right down to what should be a pulsating finish. Geelong running on the better. There's no question about that. This is Couch, the centre and kick. Malakelis in open space alongside the centre circle. 143 to 126. Malakelis unloads. Why not? Ablett's down there. Drops off the pace. Missed down there by Langford. Oh, great recovery too. Gets the hand pass away. Courage from all concern. Runs colliding with Dippy and Domenico. Down goes Collins. In goes Scott. Grabbed by Langford. And the umpires blow on the whistle. Gee, it's been a great last quarter. What about Bruns there taking on Dippy and Domenico? Terrific stuff. Just over five minutes and 20 seconds remaining. And the clock is running. Flanagan has been superb. Now the Buse gets the hand pass away. Stoneham in the grass, loses the ball. Collins falls on top of it. Dippy and Domenico throws himself back in. And once more, the umpire calls. Well, precious seconds being wasted by Hawthorne there. Their teamwork, their tackling, their discipline in the crunch situation just could be enough to hold them in good stead. Under five minutes left. The ball at half forward for the Cats. Flanagan attempts to get it out the back. Bacanara, a hand pass over the top. And it goes over the boundary line for a throw-in. Hawthorne have got to defend around the boundary line. Defend around the boundary line as Bacanara did on that occasion. There's good play by Bacanara. Flanagan and Deer, the two number 14s. Deer gets the tap out. Opportunity there for Bearstow, but Dippy Domenico giving it a big fist. It goes over for another boundary throw-in. So a tremendous effort by both sides. And we're close to the end of the game. And only three goals separates the two sides. Tuck, Bairstow over the top, Bruns, bounce favours Bruns. Bruns goes for goal. Brownless at the back, Ablett! This could be the record number of goals kicked in a grand final at the moment held by Dermot Brereton. Gary Ablett has kicked eight, a chance to kick his ninth. And that mistake coming from his brother-in-law, Michael Tuck on the outer flank, the back flank for Hawthorne. He goes Ablett for goal number nine, and he's threaded it. Well, it's just snuck in that one. And what a game. On the half-back flank, it was Michael Tuck trying to do the right thing by going over his head to the boundary line, but it was cut off by the Geelong forwards. And then Ablett just holding his ground. Here it is, Bearstow runs... There's the high balls. And a great battle between Langford and Ablett. Do you think anyone's left the ground, Dennis? I don't think so. What a game. What tremendous stuff. When they write the book on grand finals, this will rank with the best of them. We're back in the middle. Nine points the difference. There's the time remaining. The fast finishing Cats quartered this time as Whitman boots it to the outer side. Condon leads in the foot race. Gary Hocking behind him. A tired Condon slipped over. Away comes Bruns. Bruns on the outer side. Kicks towards centre wing. They're fighting for their football survival now. Close to the boundary line. The Brownlow medalist crashes in. And it's out of bounds and will be thrown in. Ball couch. 13 kicks, 10 hand passes. The two 14s. It fell forward. Whitman, the hurried kick. Inside the last three minutes now. Ball on centre wing. Geelong slip over. That time it was Bearstow. Morrissey the hand pass away. Pritchard the run. Goes down towards the pocket. Curran goes back and takes a very courageous mark. The luck of the draw there where the kick came off the Hawthorne players. Shin and Couch slipped over. Unbelievable. So we're down to 2.35 now. Peter Curran. Deep in the left full forward pocket. It's kick three. Clock is running again. Whistle time on. Peter Curran. Can he seal it here? The kick falls short. Margin. 
132 to 144. Two goals of difference. Darson doesn't waste any time. Comes to the member side. Hughes gathers pretty well. And he runs away from Brereton. He's up towards half-back. No one really to kick to. It's right on this member's wing. Collins will take it over. And that'll waste some more precious seconds for the Hawks. They lead by two goals. 21 goals, 18 to 20 goals, 12. A fantastic game of football. The 1989 Grand Final in perfect conditions here at the MCG. Couch finds some space, but he's well tackled. He gets the hand pass back. Hamilton somehow gets his foot to the ball. Up towards half forward. Stoneham flips it out the back, but Collins is the first there for Hawthorne. He kicks it across his body, and fortunately for Hawthorne, Darren Pritchard is there, and he takes the mark on centre wing. Well, Hawthorne slowing it down. That's what they've got to do. A minute and a half left. Pritchard has the ball. He's 23rd possession. And Pritchard doesn't waste any time and kicks it now. Up towards the 50 metre line. The Geelong defence punch it away. Hockey. Transfers play to the opposite side of the ground. Dippy Domenico can't mark. Linda a little late on the scene. Hamilton gathers. Kicks it to Scott. This could be another Geelong goal. There'll be only one kick in it if Scott can get the ball. He gathers well and kicks it to Cameron who's marked 40 metres from goal. He'll have to kick it quickly because there's under a minute left. Cameron, move it. Panic stations. Taking too long. David Cameron has kicked one. David Cameron has kicked two. That'll stop the clock. Well, what a magnificent low. What can we do in here? Geelong have got to just go straight down the centre now. They can't afford to waste time. Hawthorne, on the other hand, have just got to hold it up. It's a kick from Cameron, a real pressure one. I thought he might have taken a little long to get rid of that ball, but then again, he doesn't realise the situation. He kicked eight goals, Dennis, in the last turn. What a fantastic finish. The dying seconds. Geelong need a goal to tie. And there's going to be a ball up. Valuable time is just ticking away. We're down to 15 seconds now as play restarts. Geelong must get it immediately. Run down by Flanagan, taken by Buse, upended by Dippy and Domenico. They lock it up again. It looks like it's all over. The dream of back-to-back -back pennants is all but there as far as the Hawks are concerned. There's the siren. Hawthorne have won it by six points. A hard stopper. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just seen a classic. at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Alan James has made history for the proud Hawthorne Football Club. The heads are bowed at Geelong, but what a magnificent performance by the Cats. They stood them up as start, perhaps one of the great teams of all time. Not perhaps, definitely one of the great teams of all time. They stood them up as start at 40 points, and they reeled them in. Hawthorne, of course, would say Platten was down. Barrett was hurt the opening minutes. And of course, Ayers as well. Let's go down to Alan Jeans. He's talking with Michael Roberts. What was, what's it like to have back-to-back -back premierships now? Great, great. It's a tremendous feeling. How can you get a word with a coach? That's and a tough one to do, isn't very it? Very difficult because uh, he's got to be very emotional. And so many people want to be there with him. The players, the training staff, the coaching staff. It's a pretty exciting time and a great effort by Hawthorne to hang on. And the other thing you've got to consider is that they were the work of walking wounded at the end there. Let's go down to Gary Buckingham now, talking with Bernie. Gary, you're pretty emotional. Oh, yeah. You know, something we've worked so long for and all the hard work, you know, it's fantastic. I just feel so happy for Tenzi and Joyce and the boys. And, oh, it's fantastic. It was a fantastic finish, Gary. Oh. Hold on, there's a few sore boys in the Hawthorne team. Yeah, we... He really battled on Tucky split the webbing right in his finger in the first few minutes of that quarter, so he was basically out of action. About 16 men we had in that last quarter, so it was pretty tough out there. The first quarter they hit you with everything, didn't they? Yeah, they tried. They gave it their best shot, did they play well? And you won it for Jeansy? We won it for Jeansy, Joyce and all the boys who couldn't make it. And it's good to get another one under the belt. Oh, it's fantastic. Well done, Gary. Thanks, Congratulations. Bernie. Well done. Thanks, Bernie. Eight premierships to Hawthorne then. Their first came in 1961. They've won the last two. Gary Ablett. What a story that is. Nine goals this afternoon, eight last week.
Seven the week before. It's a good thing there's not a replay next week. He was set for ten. And Jeans. I would suggest Dennis uh, looking at Tony Peake, who's the uh, promotions uh, manager with the VFL, that Gary Ablett could be the recipient of the Norm Smith medal. Michael Roberts is talking with Dermot Brereton. Back-to-back -back flags, Dermy, how does it feel? It's a great feeling. We had to put it in there whether we were going to make it to a great side. A lot of it out here today. How would you come to play? Sorry and uh, sore, but uh, not too much now. You, you lost, uh, you lost, um, plat lost, yeah, lost platen and you lost airs, so uh, you couldn't fall over too many of you. So uh, it was a great character builder, wasn't it? Yeah, the character was probably... Uh, one of the attributes which got us through in the end, uh, Geelong, as I said, we were a great side and they emphasised that by coming back the way they did. And uh, we had to carry on and just grind away at them and hoping the siren was going to go. The character does that. A tremendous effort. Go and enjoy it with the lads. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. From one champion to another, let's go across and speak now with Gary Ablett, his burning. Yeah, I've got the superstar here, Gary Ablett. Well done, Gary. A record-breaking performance with the nine goals, but it would have been better to get the win on the board. Yes, yeah, certainly would have, but... Um... Uh, Hawthorne are a good side, and uh, you know, we give it a good go, but unfortunately we, uh, we didn't make it. So. Only that first quarter that lost it for you? Yeah, we let them get away a bit. We come back, but um, you know, they were too good for some of those. Yeah. Well, we showed great character today, and a fantastic performance. Tremendous, Gary. Let's go down to Ross Oakley now. Long champion, Billy Goggin. This is for the Norm Smith medal, and this will be a tough decision. Gary Ablett has won it. Oh, he was a tremendous player, Dennis. Uh, he was the man who was either going to win the game or keep Geelong in it. And with nine goals, what a fantastic performance. Not too many men have won that from a losing side. I was side. just going to make mention of that, Dennis. It's a terrific effort. Let's listen. I'd just like to thank Hawth uh, to congratulate Hawthorne and I'd uh, like to thank the Geelong Football Club. And uh, I'd just like to thank God for making it all possible. Thank you. Gary Ablett becomes the second man from a losing side to, to win uh, the North Smith medal. The uh, Premiership Cup. Tippy Dominica is going off the ground. I don't know what happened Mr. there. Mr. Football himself, E.J. Whitten. Now we've got the presentation of the VFL Cup and the players' medallions. Ted Whitten up to make the presentations. What a day Could it's we been. we have the captain of the Hawthorne team, please? Tucky. <laughs> Tucky still looked pretty involved in the emotion of it all. He's busy. What a great performance by him too, Dennis. Uh, what, 36 or 37 years of age? And still running around the ground like a 19-year-old. I guess the legs aren't the same, but uh, his spirit is enormous. What a team they are here for. And Alan Jeans, of course, has come Ladies back and gentlemen, this year and uh, taken over from Alan Joyce and coached them to another flag. Michael Tucker and the coach Alan Jeans. This team, no question, is the yardstick, the benchmark of the BFL. And they savour the moment. Just getting back to Geelong again, wasn't that a fantastic effort by Geelong after kicking, what, only two goals in the first quarter to Hawthorne's eight goals four? And at the finish, there's Malcolm Blight addressing the players, which is... I think is indicative of Malcolm Blight. Fairly composed person and a lot of charisma. Terrific effort. Everybody here got their money's worth. But the old story goes, there had to be a loser. I'm glad we won it today. So I just want to thank you very much from the Hawthorne Football Club. That's terrific stuff to listen to Michael Tuck. And the memory goes back to when he came down from Berwick in 1970 as a skinny kid. He was so shy. He's done credit. It's a credit to himself the way he's played over these years. And now the medallions. Okay. If we can get the boys organised over there, Hawthorne. First of all, to receive his medallion, Chris Mew. Oh, Chris. Ted Whitten making the presentations. Hey, John, isn't it amazing how guys who have fought out 120 minutes of tough football and they can still drink that champagne when you win, can't you? <laughs> Here he is, Chris Mew, ladies and gentlemen. I think Malcolm Blight is making the point too. He's keeping Geelong out from the ground. And they're watching this. 
Having been in that situation, Dennis, it really does hurt. Number four, Andrew Collins. Number seven, Gary Ayer. Normally the captain makes these presentations or calls them up, but Tucky's gone missing. Gary Ayer. Gary Ayer, here he comes. Would be very disappointed, Gary Ayres. He injured his thigh, had to sit out the last Number quarter, eight. but his contribution Jamie early Anderson. was just terrific. He's a guy who's played a pretty good year. Dan Ladies Anderson, and gentlemen, they I might four goals in the grand now, final, was a good effort. The medico has left the ground, and he's not feeling too well. But still, I think we should give him a big round of applause, and I'll certainly pass on his game. Chris Whitman. Number 10. Chris Whitman. Very eager. Let's hear it for number 11, Gary Bacanara. What a great player he's been over the years. Oh, a real opportunity. He's the icing on the cake, isn't he? Well, he it. just cannot contain him. Four goals today, four goals won. 14 kicks and 10 hand number passes. Number 14, coming up. Always seems to be in the right Italian. place at Fred the right Pierre. time, Bucky. So what about this guy? Well, this is the man that really did get them into the finals. He's just put in a sterling number effort all year eight. in the ruck, a lone Darren hand. Pritchard. This man coming up now, probably, I Darren believe, Pritchard. Hawthorne's best player today. Probably a bit stiff too. Don Ablett kicking all those goals, perhaps oh, swinging it, but out. Darren Pritchard has a tremendous effort all day. Here he comes, Darren Pritchard. Probably blotted his copy book. He didn't kick a goal, but he had four points registered. Well, let's hear it for number 19, Jason Dunstall. Four goals today, so he finishes the season on 138. And what wouldn't show up are two brilliant tackles. Number 20, coming back after injury, Scott McGuinness. What about that collision with the behind post there in the last quarter? And also, he's played with a ruptured ankle. So it was a great Number effort. Number 23, the kid, Dermot Graven. What an identity, though, Dermot Curtin. And and also, he showed a lot of character. He stayed on the ground, Don, oh, yes. Terrific, because uh, that crunch okay. must have really hurt him. Oh, it did hurt. Uh, it 24. really did hurt. Chris Langford. And he really did curb the brilliance of Ablett there for a while. It was a great battle between those two. Number 25. Yes, I don't think Peter you'd like to be Curran. drawn out of the hat to play against Gary Ablett no. at any stage, would you? You'd have to be drawing the short straw. Peter Curran also coming into this game. He had fluid on the knee. He was one of the injured players receiving treatment through the week. Number 31, the youngster, only his sixth league game, Greg Madigan. What a great fill that must be. And he looked good when he came on. And he did well. He started, he's played his football as a ruckman, but he picked up a half-back flank and did Number well. Number 34, he's there again, John Kennedy. And he was a very, very good player in the first quarter. John Kennedy got Hawthorne going. Very solid citizen. Let's hear it for number 35, James Morrissey. Well, they call him the freak. He did some freakish things today. School teacher at Doncaster High School. And of course, he's here somewhere. I can't see him out in this crowd. Number 44, John Platton. Now up on the ground, though. It looks to be okay, and that's good news. And he received his medallion, his premiership medallion for 1989, the Foster's Grand Final. The coach, Helen James. Back to back flags. Alan Joyce last season. Isn't it? Alan Jeans this season. Tonight. His eighth year at Hawthorne, of course, a premiership coach at St Kilda. Well done, Alan. A nonchalant the wave of the head. Michael Tuck. He looks 37. Oh, oh, he's too ready. <laughs> what a bloke, eh? No, what a guy. What a guy. Ladies and gentlemen, what a thrilling grand final in the Fosters. Uh, so that's it, the presentations have been made, just repeating, now, Gary Ablett won the Norm Smith medal.
They finished with nine goals. Now, final score line in an epic grand final. The Hawks, 21-18, have defeated the Cats, 21-12. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the Hawks will certainly be whistling tonight. Back-to-back -back flags for a team of absolute champions. But full credit to Geelong, who came back so strongly and eventually just failed by six points. The boys begin their premiership lap of honour, carrying the injured John Platten. And Hawthorne knows what it's like to win today too. Jason Dunstall finished with four goals. That took his season's tally to 138 and certainly did cap off a memorable year. Here he is, talking with Michael Roberts. Thanks, Sandy. And Jason, your fourth flag in a decade. Great success. It must be a fantastic feeling. It is, Michael. Um, you know, we've achieved everything we set out to at the beginning of the year and for it all to come together today is just terrific. A perfect day, big crowd, the ground. What was it like out there? As you say, it was perfect conditions. I mean, we couldn't complain. There was a slight breeze to keep it cool. Um, the crowd atmosphere was tremendous. It was just a perfect day for football. Now, Hawthorne started to tire a little bit. How important was that week's rest coming into this game? I think it's very important. You know, you've got a few guys with niggly injuries. They get over that. But um, then we set off at such a cracking pace. I guess we had to tire eventually, but fortunately, we hang on. A tremendous effort by Hawthorne. Back-to-back -back premierships. Club history. Fantastic. Thanks, Jason Dunstall. Thanks very much. Yes, a great performance by the Hawks. Jason held well today, but still finished the day with four goals, picking up eight marks and ten kicks. Now let's go down to their rooms as Bernie Quinlan is speaking with skipper Damien Burke. Yes, thanks, Sandy. Damien, well, really it was a fantastic performance to come back from so far down after that first quarter. Yeah, we, uh, we really, I suppose we lost it in the first quarter. We were trying to play catch-up footy uh, from there on. Very disappointing to come so close. Uh, by the same token, it is an effort that I'm really proud of all the guys. Yes, they certainly would have won the respect of the football world today. Yeah, I know. You know, it really hurts at the moment, but I think later on, look, I am really proud of every player. Uh, Malcolm's done a great job, and actually the whole club from, you know, our board of directors right down the boot studders have uh, really pushed for the one, one cause this year, and it's, uh, well, it nearly paid off. Well, Malcolm's been fantastic this year. Has yeah. he been the, the, the person to change it around at Geelong? Because you've always had the ability there, and yet it's never come through until this year. Yeah, Malcolm's certainly the man. It's, uh, it's also a combination of factors. You know, we have the, everybody in the club is the best feeling we've ever had since I've been there. All pushing in the one direction, and just the, the amount of work that's been done behind the scenes, as well as you know, training. Um, like I said, the board of directors, our administration staff. Um, all our trainers, everybody's put in a really lot of work this year. Yeah, well, bad luck. It was a magnificent performance by Geelong, and I'm sure, they, as I said, they've won the respect of the, respect of the football world, and uh, well, I'm sure we'll see you back here next year. Oh, we, we've learned a lot, Bernie. Yeah, we'll good on you. Yeah. Thanks, Damien. Thank that. that completes our day here at the MCG. Wherever you've been watching, I hope you've enjoyed the 1989 Grand Final.